call to order the February 27th public hearing for the City of Tampa Aspire Latino Commission. Welcome everyone. I'm Rich Simmons, Chair of the Commission. If you are to hear speak to present a project, you will have limited time to make your presentation, so we suggest being thorough but concise. When coming to the microphone, you will need to identify yourself and your relationship to the project. The commissioners will not ask any questions during your presentation. Your project should be presented in the following order. Site plan, elevations, architectural details, wall sections. Staff presents staff report. We will then ask for public comment. Following your presentation, the commissioners will be asking questions in the same order as the presentation. Please state and spell your name clearly if you're here to speak for or against the project. Your time will be limited to three minutes, so take some time now to summarize your comments. Three minutes goes by very quickly. Following public comment, the applicant will, be, will have five minutes for rebuttal. The public hearing will then be closed. The only comments which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in, any res will be in response to any questions from the commissioners. The commissioners will then discuss the case and will make their decision based upon the city ordinance, chapter 27 of the city zoning code, the design guidelines, the Secretary, Secretary of Interior standards, design review comments, and the testimony given here today. The BLC can only act on items that are within our specific jurisdictional responsibility. Owner agents are independently responsible to obtain any permits and or approvals. If you haven't already done so, please silence your cell phones. We'll start with the introduction of the commissioners, starting on my right. Liz Welch. Leaving when? Vivian Solaga. Okay. And today from uh, city staff, we have Dennis Fernandez, Ron Vila, Heather Bonds, Alexis Guzman, and Dana Crosby Collier from legal. Uh, we have the minutes from the January 23rd, 2024 uh, meeting in our packet. Has everyone had a chance to review? So motion to approve the minutes from Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. Second. Okay, any discussion or comment? All in favor said motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Fernandez. Good morning, Commissioners. Dennis Fernandez, Architectural Review and Historic Preservation Manager. Welcome to today's public hearing, uh, both to uh, our commissioners and to our applicants and those viewing us. I did want to begin by submitting the um, administrative approvals that are part of the record for the January 2024 cycle. We have those for the clerk to place into the record. Uh, next, I wanted to uh, just briefly uh, welcome our newest commissioner, Commissioner Salaga, who is uh, serving in uh, the architect's position for the board, an architect's position for the board, a, a longtime preservationist and uh, very uh, generous with her time serving on our boards uh, in the city of Tampa. So we appreciate your time and welcome you to the board. And uh, also congratulate uh, recently appointed uh, Chairman Simmons, who was uh, reappointed to a second term uh, by the mayor uh, and was sworn in this morning. Appreciate your time and, and commitment to the program as well. Uh, with that, I wanted to take a moment to um, go through our preservation in progress for the month. Uh, this is a, a reoccurring item on the uh, agenda that uh, highlights uh, different preservation uh, projects in the city and just uh, spend some time discussing. This particular one is um, uh, a uh, relocation that occurred in the Hyde Park Historic District. Uh, and, and although not in Ybor City, there's a lot of uh, common um, standards and approaches that uh, I think we can all appreciate and learn from. Uh, this particular uh, building uh, was, a, was a contributing building in the Hyde Park Historic District. Uh, originally located at 1815 South Rome Avenue. Uh, there was a large-scale redevelopment that prompted uh, a request to the Architecture Review Commission to relocate this structure uh, within the district. And uh, so this uh, brief PowerPoint summarizes that uh, process and the, um, the relocation itself. This is the structure which was, as I said, contributing, located uh, Constructed in 1912, a uh, very nice uh, Dutch colonial structure that was situated just outside of Hyde Park Village, uh, was uh, approved for relocation 
on November 4th, 2020, um, the ARC approved uh, modifications and a variance for the accessory structure as well uh, in, the, in the following months. So this was a unique situation where the accessory structure on the site was a contributing structure, a historic structure within the period of significance, but the principal structure was uh, not contributing. So the, um, the applicant essentially uh, demolished the non-contributing structure retained the contributing accessory structure, and then made the request to, to relocate the contributing structure onto the receiving site. Uh, once structures are relocated, uh, picked up and moved to a different site, they, there's a process that needs to occur to redesignate those as contributing structures that occurs with the Historic Preservation Commission, and that particular process uh, was completed in May of 2023. So you see the um, the receiving site uh, marked at the base of the red arrow on Fremont Street, and the sending site, uh, the original location on uh, Rome Avenue, just uh, south of Hyde Park Village. And uh, the uh, 1931 Sanborn map showing the original location in the green box, and you see the subject parcel at that particular time was uh, vacant. So it was a when you get into these uh, older urban neighborhoods, there's uh, many things that have to be dealt with for relocation, uh, you know, many of which have to do with trees and uh, utilities and just the configuration of being able to move the house through the neighborhood. So this particular structure, as you can see, had to kind of navigate that, that area. And, and we work with uh, both our mobi mobility uh, department and with the, um, the mover to identify the route that's the most efficient and the less impact to other resources within the neighborhood. So here's the structure and, and, and an advertisement and a, for its sale in 1944. You see, you see it on the original lot. Uh, this is uh, the photo on the left is, is when the house was actually cut into two pieces so that it could be moved. And then on the right, where it's now situated on its receiving site, uh, reassembled on site. And then part of the um, construction process and then the final product there on the right in 2023. This was the accessory structure. The accessory structure had some pretty extreme conditions as well. Uh, this being in an area that was prone to flooding and then also having uh, less than sufficient head heights, there was a need to redo the foundation and to slightly raise the structure. You see that final product there on the right as well. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez, it's a, sure. that's a great achievement for Hyde Park. Pretty so dramatic. I can't believe you can cut a house like that in pieces and move, move. Yeah. modular modularity, yeah. right? Yeah. Got to label it, right? <laughs> uh, moving on, we'll, uh, we'll address the conflicts of interest and ex parte communication with our legal counsel. Good morning. Dana Crosby Collier from the legal office. Um, I'd like to ask if any member has a conflict of interest with any item on the agenda this morning. Okay. And has any member had an ex parte communication regarding any item on the agenda this morning? Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we do have one continuation uh, that we need to act upon. Uh, that is item number seven on your agenda. It's for BLC 23-141. And uh, the agent is requesting to uh, continue that to the April 23rd, 2024 BLC public hearing at 9 a.m. Uh, so motion to move BLC 23-141 to the Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024 public hearing at 9 a.m. Second. All in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll administer the swear-in. Anyone in the audience who's going to be presenting this morning or providing public testimony, please raise, uh, please raise your right hand and stand for the swear-in. I do. Thank you. With that, we're ready for our first case.
Good morning, commissioners. I'm Ron Vila. I'm staff with Historic Preservation. And um, our first case this morning is BLC 24-13. This is for the address of 926 East 11th Avenue. And our second case is BLC 24-14 for 928 East 11th Avenue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine those in one photo presentation. The photos will be here if you need them for reference uh, through the, the public hearing. Uh, I spoke with the agent. The agent is going to address the first case. Because they're side-by-side, -side, it's kind of unique. He's going to address the first case and then the second case. Um, going through the photos, this is starting with the Sanborn map from 1929. The first property in question is four parcels from the corner of 11th Avenue and 10th Street. There is an open alley that runs east and west behind the subject sites. As you look from above, you still have an empty parcel on the corner. You had two contributing structures. And then the, the first house that we're going to look at is an empty parcel. With that parcel, there's a partial retaining wall that is characteristic to that block. And just looking a little closer of existing, that lot goes to about here, so some of the wall has been removed. The agent's going to talk about how the reconstruction or how he's going to deal with that. This uh, wall does encroach into the city's property, into the sidewalk, and that will be part of the discussion as well. Moving to the second parcel, which is just abutting, this is the fifth parcel from the corner. You have an empty lot. You have Two contributing structures, you have the empty parcel we just looked at, and then another empty parcel. Once again, this is 11th Avenue, 10th Street to the west, 12th Street to the east, and then you have 12th Avenue to the north with that alley that I spoke about that runs east and west behind. This is a current aerial. You see the, the canopy of trees that uh, en encompassate that, that site. It has been reviewed by Natural Resources. The site plan that you will see this morning can move forward as presented. This is looking at the contributing structure. It's a one-story craftsman-style home. This is to the west of the subject sites. Moving to the subject sites where are here. The structure to the east is a one-story contributing structure as well. You see some of the retaining walls along that block. Looking, this is looking down 11th Avenue to the east. Turn around, looking down 11th Avenue to the west. Directly across the street, you have a contributing structure. And just the condition of the alleys, this is looking at the alley from the easternmost portion of the alley. Uh, looking west, this is looking at the alley as you engage in the middle of the block, and then as it comes out on the western end, and how it intersects uh, with 10th Street. Um, that concludes the, the photo presentation at this time, and I'll have the agent address the board. Can you, can you put it back on the, mm -hmm. please? Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Alvaro Rodriguez, and I am the architect of the project. Can you hear me clear, or can you hear me perfect? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, the property is located in 926 611 Avenue. This uh, picture shows the proposed structure that we we're going to do. The lot, this is a small lot, is only 26 feet by 110. The average setback for that property is 22.3. Feet. We already took that average from the other property for the whole block in order to lay out the house. 
the side is two feet, the ground of the property is two feet above the existing sidewalk, and there is a retaining wall on the front of the of the of the property that goes outside, just on the line of the property line, but outside, eight inches outside of the property line. I already have some conversation with the department for that uh, easement. I am working with them to have some kind of authorization to repair that wall. But half of the wall is already existing on the property. I just try to repair. The columns are in a good shape, but I have from this column to the right, I have to repair because it's, it's, it's not in a good condition. The stairs are there. I will repair the stairs. Then you go up two feet. Then you go the stairs to the porch that is another two feet to this front porch. The setback for the property that I propose is three feet four inches on each side in order to have the overhand one foot four and have two feet separation from the property line to the overhand. The house will be two feet above existing grade. That means that will be four feet from the asphalt that is from the sidewalk that is typical on that location. On the back, I will have the, there is an existing alley that is 10 feet uh, wide. In order to have the spa enough space for the cars to back up, I need to go uh, the 10 feet plus 14 feet plus the 18 feet of the car. That means that I have 37 feet from the, from the property line to the structure. There are some trees on the property. We already talked with natural resources and we have a tree report that the trees are not in a good conditions and should be removed. There is a side, we propose a sidewalk that basically we go, this is the entry, we have a sidewalk from the existing stair to the proposed stair, and the sidewalk will go on the left back to connect, this. the sidewalk will be only three feet, and basically we'll connect the front porch to the back because we propose pavers on the, on the back of the property to connect to the alley. The system for stormwater treatment will be underground system. And we propose that underground underneath of the, of the driveway on the back. This is the average setback, has been certified by the surveyor with the dimension from the edge of asphalt to all the properties on that block. And that's the number that we took for the average setback. This is the, this is 11th Avenue. This is the property we propose to improve this alley from this street to the property. And this alley, will, we will extend a little bit more in order to get access to the next property. We will have, this is the one that we have doing the presentation right now. And this will be the next one that I will do the presentation in the next uh, case. This is the retaining wall that we have to do. One is the retaining wall from the retaining wall by itself, and the other one is the column for the retaining wall because that retaining wall has two columns on each side of the stair. This is basically the, the, the rendering for the house. You see the retaining wall. We, we propose to have because this retaining wall is, is we, we will repair this retaining wall. We propose the next retaining wall was removed. We propose to build it inside the property, not inside the, the right away. But I will discuss that on the next step. And this is the sidewalk that goes to the back and the, the property is two feet high and two feet here. And columns, uh, fake columns with brick veneers, sports rafters, uh, trees, siding. I will go with, this is the other elevation. 
that is basically the west elevation of the house. The sidewalk that goes to the back, the alley, the driveway, the columns that I say that the, the columns on the at the edge of the of the stairs are wider than the that the that the retaining wall by itself. This is the back elevation. The AC unit machine. We have a six feet of space here. I propose to have the AC on the back facing the alley and keep another three feet here for the for the garbage can in order that we won't have any spots of anything from the front of the property. Okay, this is the, the detail of the elevation. We will have stucco on this on the on the front of the porch. We will have brick veneers in the columns, concrete cap, and this will be a pretty wood railing. Concrete roof finish for the for the slab on the porch. The the door of the of the house will be half glass, half solid. Uh, the Trim of the windows will be six inches harding board on the sides and on the top. And on the bottom, we have a historic uh, seal. The columns will be concrete columns, but we will wrap the columns with cement board finish. And we will have a four inch trim around the columns for, for the edges and for the top. This will be top four inches bottom four inches, side four inches, and hardy board on this side. All of these will be hardy board, six inches, yellow hardy board, according with the color that I received from the, from the Barrio Latino. And these are the two lights that we will have side by side on the door. We will have a six inches horizontal cement board here with a different color. And we will have the yellow on this, the white on this area also. The second floor will be wood, uh, two by six bedding walls. And the, the column will be wrapped around in order to have the same proportion of the first floor. And we'll have exactly the same material. We will have a hardy board on the face of the columns, and we will have a four inches string around the columns on the sides, on the bottom, and on the top. We will have the same door on the second floor facing the porch, and we will have hardy board on the walls and hardy board on the trees. On the windows will be exactly the same. We have six inches hardy board around the around the windows, on the sides, on the top, and historic stick on the bottom. The gable will be stagger edge hardy, and we will have a six inches trim on this side, and we will have two by six exposed rafters to go side by side. This is the dimension that I just discussed, that is, this is the setback three, four, three feet, four inches, and we will have two feet from the property line and one foot four overhand. This is the east elevation. Basically shows the, the, the stock code, the Brick veneers to have the columns, the skirt board, uh, six inches, the hardy board, the same windows will have exactly the same uh, trim for all the windows of the house. Uh, the spots rafters on the top, shingle roof, uh, the railing, and the same columns with the, with the same uh, finish. That will be hardy board uh, facing the columns and four inches trim around it. This is the back, the rear facing the alley. This will be the AC unit facing the alley. 
and we have the same windows, the same trim, the same uh, trim on the edges, a stagger edge hardy on the gables, and two by six sport rafters. This is the west elevation, exactly the same. This is more the interior floor plan of the house. Basically, it will be a, a single family home. Uh, four bedrooms will be around 2,000 2, square foot living, uh, front porch. A living area, kitchen, and two bedrooms on the first floor, a stair to the second. And on the second floor, a couple of uh, bedrooms with the bathrooms and with access to the balcony on the second floor. This is the structure details of that house. This will be concrete block wall, the first floor, with hardy. The second floor will be uh, 24 inches of trusses with plywood and waterproof material and hardy on the applied to the waterproof material. And this is the gable with the overhang on the front. Uh, this is the detail for the window. The window will be recess, but we try to keep exactly won't be a flush window with the walls. Will be recess to have the same the same characteristic that we have the windows on the block on the first floor. Uh, this is the hardy board. This is the historic seal, and the two by six string on the top. Spots rafters with two by six shingle roof this is another section will be exactly the same material stock on the bottom hardy on the top this is the detail for the column basically we will wrap the column with the column will be a six by six column but we will we will we will wrap that column with hardy board to have the same look that we have the column on the first floor. Uh, the ceiling. The ceiling will be hardy soffit panels. This is the second floor, the balcony. We will do we will do the same, the same type of material. The column cap, the concrete column, stucco. This is the same porch. Basically, we have uh, the column, the lintels. The idea is to have, because the column is only, uh, the column will be wider than the, than the support on the top. We will encroach this to have the same width of the column from the bottom to the top. More structure details. <laughs> this is a cross section showing the section on the porch. I just did that to show that the porch, because it's, it's difficult to see from the front with the columns, but show exactly the same dimension of the tree, the same dimension of the, of the door, the half and half for the door. This is the detail for the railing. 
the railing will be P2 wood studs, 2x6 on the top, 2x4 on the bottom, 2x2 on the spigots, 2x4 on the bottom, and this will be the space that the, 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 the railing will be 2 inches above the slab. And this is the detail for the, for the other one, for the one on the top. The one on the front, we did it lower than the one on the second floor. On the front is two feet, four inches, is lower than the one on the top. These are the lamps. This is the detail for the door. The door will be, won't have this decoration, will be completely clear, but this is the style of the door. The windows will be Sierra Pacific, Sierra Pacific windows. This is the detail for the window seal, historic window seal, section of the historic window seal. The trim for the windows, when we have two windows together, the center will be a, a eight inch stream board. The sides will be six inches and the top will be six inches. On the windows that are single will be six inches on the sides plus the historic seal, but will be wider this stream on the windows on the second floor. The window will be single horn and won't be, won't be this open on that side, will be single horn windows. These are the details for the siding, the stagger edge for the gables, the regular smooth for the walls. Uh, these are the colors. We took the colors with the board that the uh, Barrio Latino has in round office, uh, the spots rafters, and we're gonna use uh, this block for the for the to repair the retaining wall this is a split face block and the color will be this one that is close i think that is close enough to the color that they have there is is dirty right now and it's difficult to see that color but i think that that's the color that match perfect with that one these are some examples that i took for all the elevation from the area uh, I propose this house, for example, it doesn't have a welcome wall. I propose to have that houses that one will have a welcome wall and the other one won't have welcome wall to have some kind of difference between one house and the other one. And, and I took this from some elevation of that houses that does not have welcome wall. This one has welcome walls. More example of that area with the columns. This, this is the house that we just discussed. And we will discuss next this one, but basically I try to have different way to handle the gables, to have the spot rafters, to have the raft, the brackets, uh, to have uh, the windows, the porch, the columns are a little different. Uh, welcome walls, uh, the color of the walls, to have some kind of that the house doesn't look exactly the same. This is from the front on the looking to the other side. And this concludes my presentation. Good morning, Commissioners. Ron Vila, I'm staff with Historic Preservation. This is BLC 24-13. This is for the address of 926 East 11th Avenue. We're gonna focus on the one that is on the most uh, western portion. Uh, currently, it's a vacant parcel with a YC2 zoning classification. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction with site improvements. Staff's finding that this application is consistent with the Ybor City des Design Guidelines with the plans that we looked at on February 2nd, 2024. In your packet, there's some letters that were submitted uh, into the record. You have those there as uh, comments for uh, later today. And we have 
I believe the people that crafted the letters here to address them as well in person. Uh, when you go through the, the application of the de design standards on page three of your staff report, we look at the consistency for scale and width, facade widths, setbacks, spacing, alignment, similarities and details and forms, and building materials as part of the criteria to see if it's consistent with our, our guidelines. Uh, moving to conditions on page three, uh, that was a very thorough presentation this morning. Uh, with the setbacks, he, he showed uh, numbers that were consistent with that block average. Elevation from grade, he showed the surrounding properties as well. And initially, his project had a handrail coming up the middle, which is usually foreign. If it's not uh, requested by code, we have the agent eliminated, which it was not shown today. Uh, I think additional discussion needs for the final alley solution. We do have transportation here if you have any specific questions for mobility. Uh, he did address the retaining wall. There's a portion of it still existing. That's the historic retaining wall. He showed the, the fabric that he wishes to engage into um, the project to match as close as possible as he can. As it sits, that wall does encroach, so if it is approved, if he has final approval today, he will have to go into, into the encroachment agreement with the city of Tampa to finalize that. That is an administrative function that could be handled. It shows that the second one, he's going to set it back into the property line. So we're only going to talk about this one if, if it encroaches and it stands as presented. I think additional paving, he talked about the connector from the sidewalk to the front porch, that walkway, what material is that, and then the circulation from the parking, whatever the parking material is, and as it comes for the pedestrian from the back to the front of the property. If he could call out the materials there, please. And then the overhangs. Uh, he did address uh, two by six exposed rafter tails with a two by eight barge rafter. So there was some discrepancy about that and that was discussed. Then finally, I, I believe all the additional items on page three and page four of your staff report with the roof materials, the siding materials, the foundation and the foundation enclosure he did call out the uh, windows, as Sierra Pacific cladded windows, which is a window that this board has approved in the past. And then he showed the lighting, hardware, and color palette. Uh, that concludes my portion, and I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Vila. Uh, anyone here from the public wishing to comment on this case? Please come on up, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez, if you You have three minutes. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Tamara Taylor, and I reside at 924 and a half East 11th Avenue, Tampa, Florida, 33605. I submitted comments regarding BLC 2413 and 2414, and I'm here to draw your attention to key points outlined in those comments, namely the private unsubsidized maintenance and management by Benny Taylor and Dorothy Taylor, of certain segments of the alleyway identified in, um, identified in your packets uh, for nearly 50 years at their own expense. These segments include, but may not be limited to, 936 East 11th Avenue, 924.5 East 11th Avenue, 924 East 11th Avenue, and 2201 North 10th Street, each with the Tampa zip code 33605. I would also like to address the damage risk to 2201 North 10th Street and 924 and 924 and a half East 11th Avenue that I and Christopher Vela have outlined in our respective comments. For the purpose of this reference, I specifically draw your attention to 2201 North 10th Street as shown here. Hopefully you can see that. You will notice, um, and if you can't see it here, because I don't know how to operate this, it isn't, there is a photo in your packets. Thank you. Um, you will notice that the alleyway abuts the northern side of the structure at a distance of less than 30 inches from the outer edge to the wall of the house. Though it may be difficult to see in this image, you will also notice the lack of any barriers, such as curbs, retention walls, or fencing to protect the full length of the structure. In addition to the risk of structural damage to this contributing structure that has stood for more than 100 years, other associated risk of using the alleyway as proposed include overgrowth, trash pollution, lighting placement, lack of appropriate lighting, 
general maintenance, including pavement and standing water mitigation, increased noise pollution, increased vagrancy, and statutory crime. As such, the only proposed benefits are those suggested for 926 and 928 East 11th Avenue. No other property in the surrounding area will benefit from the alleyway, as made clear by the neighborhood signatures we have collected to date that oppose its use. Therefore, we formally request time to file a resolution with the City of Tampa to close the alleyway as supported by neighbors, property owners, and um, residents of 2201 North 10th Street, 924 and a half East 11th Avenue, and 924 East 11th Avenue. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Chris Fellow. I'm here to discuss concerns regarding BLC 24-13 and 14. I live next door west to these proposed projects, and I have concerns over the physical and operational impacts of my residence at 924 and a half East 11th Avenue, including my family's properties, 924 11th Avenue and 2201 North 10th Street. Despite these different addresses, all these historic contributing properties are uniquely on a shared lot. I have three key concerns. The drawings for 926 lack detailing of roof drainage. The function of the window fenestration along the west-facing elevation of this project is unclear and raises privacy concerns. Lastly, the site plan lacks critical information, like the majority of my family's properties. My residence, which is immediately west of this proposed structure, bears on grade as originally constructed. This is unlike 926 East 11th Avenue residence, which features below grade footing. Over time, roof damage, roof drain damage from this proposed residence will erode the grading around my footings. Further, the overall exterior elevation of 926 East 11th Avenue is hardy board and aluminum clad windows. Uh, roof drainage bearing on my wall, because I was required the BLC at a time to have wood siding wood windows, increases the risk of water intrusion. Because of these concerns, I request the BLC require gutters throughout the drawing sets with downspouts to storm drainage. Due to the privacy concerns, I request the windows closest to the intersections of columns A and 2 to be a half-height window on the first floor. The renders in the drawings lack images of my residence next door, so it's unlikely this window would be noticed. It is also unclear why another window, 12 foot 8 north of this, along the same wall, is needed. The section of drawings does not even show either windows. I propose modifying the west-facing elevation fenestrations as neither is readily seen and one would not truly have any purpose. The site plan fails to show the majority of my family's contributing structures included the noted distances between the proposed drive and the historic contributing structure in 2201 North 10th Street. There is no barrier or fencing to protect this structure or the lot edges. Being over 100-year-old structures, my family properties require ongoing maintenance. Servicing 2201 North 10th Street will become a significant burden as the former alleyway will have to be closed for me to, to do any maintenance on this property. The proposed site modifications unfairly impact my family's property disproportionately more so than any other property owners and residents on this block. Please know my family has kept all these structures operational for the past 50 years and with two properties 100% restored. I implore you to not move further with BLC 24-13 and 14. There's just too much information lacking on these drawings and also on the site. And please be aware that the original structures on this site were single stories and they were not the same size of these uh, proposed structures. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to comment? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, ask questions of the applicant and the uh, public comments too as well. Do you wanna start, Ms. Welch? Okay. Could you pull up your site plan? And so I think one of the big things of concern is just this alley. So this site plan doesn't quite give me enough context for the alley and how um, the proposed residents of this uh, of this residence would kind of pull up and park. Um, could you kind of detail how, how that would happen, where the entrance to the alley is, and how, how they would kind of go, go through? Okay. This is the uh, this is the proposal that we have here. 
This is the structure that he's talking about. The structure is like maybe two feet from the property, from the from the alley uh, right away. That, this is the line of the alley. And we propose after that, we propose two ribbon driveways to get to this alley. But the alley is out of this structure. It's closed, yes, that's that's correct. But it's, it's out, the, the, the proposal that we have is here. <laughs> And so the entrance would be on, uh, is that 10th Street there? On, on, this on is the 11th West. Avenue. Uh, 11th Avenue. 10th, 10th is the other side where the alley comes out. It's like L-shaped. Good morning, Commissioners. Ron okay. Vilam, Staff of Historic it's Preservation. I believe if I put oh, this okay, plat on. It's, it's here. This is the oh, alley okay. we were speaking at. This I is gotcha. 11th okay. Avenue. This is 10th Street, 12th Street. We're looking at this intersection right here. Yeah, so that is, that is 10th Street. Okay. okay. Coming through. Oh, that's good. That's what I'm here to do. <laughs> no, so, yeah, so... Why, why is that on 11th? Because the entrance yeah, would be on 10th Street, isn't it? 11th Ave, so that's marked wrong on this drawing, right? Ele East 11th is on the south, on, you know, plant south there. Because this north is still up on the sheet, right? This is the whole, this is the whole uh, yeah. side plan. You can yeah. see the, you can see the alley here. The alley yeah. does this and go all the way here. So that's actually 10th Street. That's actually 10th Street on the, on the west side of that drawing there. I think so, yes. It's level 11th, so that's where some confusion is happening. Did we already know? have permit to this alley from, we are, we have a right away permit because we, the, we have approved these two properties and we already submit permit to right away to have all this connection to here. Okay, but come back to the, come back to what we're talking about here at this other end. Um, Sorry, I jumped right in there. Apparently, I have I have questions now. <laughs> okay, so first of all, it's East 10th Avenue, not East 11th Avenue, that the entrance is. 10th Street. street. I'm sorry, Street, Street, not East 11th Avenue as you have labeled here. Oh, sorry. Okay, yes, so yeah. that's where it comes in is East 10th, and then okay, so right now. You're, you are proposing to improve the alley, but right now there's a letter that in here that says it's been, there was an ordinance passed in 1953 to vacate it. Is that what the ver correct verbiage is? If, if I may, um, Dana Crosby Collier from the city attorney's office. The ordinance um, did not vacate the alley in this block. It vacated an alley in a block that is further north um, of this area. We have the ordinance. We've confirmed it with our GIS. This alley was not vacated. Okay, so these people, according to this letter, these people have just been maintaining this alley, but it's not a vacated alley in, that happened in, then what happened in 1953 in regards to this space? Let me show you. If I, mis if I am misunderstanding. I'll take it. I'll take Ron, Ron has the photos of the uh, area that was vacated. So we received an e email late Sunday night, so Monday we started to do a little research, and the ordinance that they talked about, this is the alley in question here. Right. And as you go to the north, There's two different subdivisions. There's Randall subdivision. There's uh, block one. Then block two has been vacated. Block three, a portion of it has been vacated. And then part of block four. Right here, then you see another subdivision. This is Marion subdivision, blocks one and two. This is what it, the ordinance talked about that they provided us documentation after further research. This is the alley that's been vacated, not the alley in question. Okay, so can you scoot your map up? Because what you're pointing at, I can't see. Okay, so it's talking about this particular project deals with 10th Street. Right here. Up, right, up to this line item, this line. Keep going up the alley, up, up, no, down, across, I'm sorry. There you stop, right there. Mm -hmm. Are they talking about to here? That's correct. Okay. 
the, the alley is, is open and unimproved this whole way. This gentleman came forward with a project earlier or maybe last year. They improved the, al the alley from here to here to get into the subject site here. And yeah. now they're proposing to improve to the alley. The whole alley. That's so correct. they're going to improve the whole alley, even though someone has been maintaining personally that alley space the and only, using the, that alley space. The only the alley status is open, unimproved. Okay. Okay. Thank you. In. In going back to the alley and looking at this picture here, there is a one, the one story residence, <clears throat> excuse me, on 10th Avenue, I think is the address, or 10th Street, sorry, I think is the address. Are you proposing in your improvement of this alley, are you proposing to do or put anything against that house? Because as a picture showed earlier, it butts right up against that property. Is there any any proposal or anything that you spoke to that I maybe missed that you're going to help that property owner in regards to that property and, and that alley? No, we don't okay. propose anything right now, but okay. we will be happy to. Okay. But well, no, we don't propose. The only thing that we propose is to have two, two ribbon driveways. It's, it's just three feet right. for access, but no, right. we don't propose anything there. Okay. In that section of the alley was kind of common. You you purposely chose to do concrete ribbons there versus turf block to allow additional setback from that house. Or is yes. There a, is there a design consideration for that decision? That was the same one that we proposed to the alley on the right side. That is basically the same alley that is coming, and that was the one that the conversation that I have with the right away department. They proposed that. They proposed that they just put two ribbon driveways could be they also they always ask me for cross concrete and I put it but I put it concrete. Sorry. What what is happening to the trees that are in that alley? You're showing some trees on this on this site plan on the north side of the alley there? The trees will be removed. They are small trees, and we didn't have any objection for the natural resources about that couple of trees. What's the total width of that alley? Uh, 10 feet. Can I ask um, a question of, to uh, transportation, John Marsh? I kind of knew that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, has your department ever had a situation like this where there's a house that is big, yes. about thirty inches, and you know, yeah, well, there, been I, ha I have gone out there with a stick, like okay. with a minimum of seven feet, to you know, like there's a there's a navigable minimum. Where we go out there, because you find in some of these areas, especially in Ebor, where the houses do partially sit into, do encroach into the alley, or there have been plumbing structures and and things. Um, I think the reason that uh, my division proposed ribbons, which is a little unusual, but we've been doing that more often, um, is an accommodation with stormwater. We work closely with stormwater because we want to make sure that any improvements in in, in the alley are not going to back water up into adjoining properties. Um, it is tight. I mean, it is tight. It, it, it does meet the requirements. If there was to be, to answer the question about could there be some sort of protective mitigation for that structure, that would have to be approached, since that would be a structure in the right of way, let's say, if it was like a bollard, I'm not advocating a bollard, but anything like that would have to be part of that right of way process because the transportation engineer would need to weigh in on whether that was creating a new hazard or not. So, but we all know there's all parts of the city where it's very tight, right? They literally sit on the property line or into the property a little bit. Great. Okay. Any more questions? 
I, um, in looking at your elevations, it does not appear that there is a, a rear door from that parking area in the back of the house. Do you have a, a floor plan you can put up there? The issue with the rear door is that the, the, the lot is that is small that this is the floor plan. The, the, the lot is only 26 feet wide oh, and the house is 22, 22 wide. And to have rear door, I will have to have a circulation from the front to the rear. And with that house that is small, if I propose a three feet or three, and the circulation has to be at least three and a half because it's too long. And it just split the house in two if I propose that kind of circulation. And that's the reason that I didn't propose a rear door, but I proposed a sidewalk that goes from the rear to the front on the side of the house. That was most of the reason that I didn't propose a, a rear door. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you don't happen to have like a drainage plan of any sorts, would you? Or at least a survey with some topo on it? Yes, yeah, the survey, the, the site plan that I have here has top on it, but uh, all the elevation are here. But a stormwater department, when I get to the, to the permit process, they will ask me for half inch of retention on that property. And that half inch will be proposed on the ground, on the, on the driveway on the back. That will be basically a, a half inch uh, rock stone with uh, percolated pipes. And then what about drainage from, from the house itself? Um, are you that that drainage will go, all the gutters and all the down spots goes to the ADS pipe and okay. goes to the, the retention. Everything that will be impervious, impervious on that property will go straight to the underground retention. It won't be any, any runoff running from the house to the neighbor's property. Well, a previous iteration that we saw in our packet had, uh, you could see the ABS pipes and you're collecting the stormwater drainage and everything, but what you're presenting to us today in the elevations doesn't have any gutters or downspouts shown. It was a exposed rafter tail edge. So we need to clarify your intent here because you just said that you're going to capture all that runoff, but I see exposed rafter tail, new chairs, yeah. <laughs> uh, raft, yeah. exposed rafter tails with no gutters, no downspouts. So. No, we will have gutters and down spots. We'll have gutters and down Yes, we will have gutters and down spots. Okay, what are, what are they like? The, there is a historic uh, down spot that is like a, like a bracket that you put on the, on, the, on the spot rafters that has just a, a half a circle shape. Half round? Yes, and that will be the one that we're going to use. But basically it goes, it's, it's side, it's, it's a little plate that is attached to the, to the, to the rafter and have that kind of shape, and we will put that to the, to the down spots. Do you have any details on that, on that? No, I don't have any details here of that gutter. You understand that there's two different things being shown, correct? That doesn't yes, show I, anything there, but I, the previous site plan, which I don't think is indicated here, of how you capture, capture mm -hmm. that. I understand that. Okay, and it looked like there was a, what's your paving material for the parking lot, for the car parking in the back? That would be pavers. Pavers? Yes. Okay, but you're using turf block in the alley, so you've really got three different materials. Going. You've got con concrete ribbons for the west part of the alley, then you go to turf block for the alley behind the house, and you go to pavers on property, correct? No, I don't have turf block. I only have pavers and concrete. Okay, well, go back to your but site plan you with the alley. <laughs> larger one. Page three. Next page. Next page. Turf block. Ah, the turf block will be on the right away. Yes, you're right. That will be, that, that is, that was the one that was required by a uh, right away on the sure. other on the other side, and I just uh, took that from the other from the other project that we have already running for right away. So when you get to your parking area on your property, 
that's pavers. Uh, I saw some iteration there, then this was in our draft packet that had some like stone or impervious material that you were sloping down and collecting as part of the stormwater system. Is that still the plan there or where where's the drainage from? Obviously your neighbors have concerns over drainage from this these two new property projects. And I want to make sure that we understand how we're capturing that water. From the right, from the driveway on the back, we have every time that we have an underground system, we put an inlet on the middle of the driveway, and the slope goes to that, and that that inlet and that storm that runoff goes straight underneath to the underground system. Okay, and that captures also the gutters and downspouts from the house that goes along the side of the building and drains to the south on the south side. Exactly, and it ties into the city system. It didn't tie on the city system. I don't think that we have to tie that. Usually we put a, a bubbler, and as soon as the system is full, the bubbler in the front will put the water out from the system. So basically any of the, any of the water that's coming on the property, you're getting off, off the property into the south. Exactly. You're not, you're not getting stuff off to the, to the we'll south. Will be half inch of collection that usually we ask, the, the city asks for it. Half inch of the whole site. So uh, retaining walls, just to make sure I understand this correctly, for not, 926, our current property that we're looking at, there is the existing re retaining wall that's historic with the steps that go up to the front. Your plan there is to repair that wall. Yes. Okay, and there's an encroachment because that goes over your property line, so that'll be a separate permit that you have to, or process that you have to go through. We already started that. Okay. Uh, we so we're started. repairing that wall, right? Uh, yeah, the idea is to repair that wall. And how, if you're missing blocks, how are you going to do that? Are you going to fabricate new blocks to look like that? We will try to match that with the split face block, but we, we, we try to clean it up because it's, it's dirty. Yeah. And the one that I found that is close enough, I think that is that one that I show you the picture. Okay. And then uh, I know from your site plan, I didn't see it today, but one of the other site plans had a TECO meter right on the front of the house. Uh, I know Tico kind of dictates where that's going to be, but at least try to get it on the side of the house first, maybe away from the sidewalk. I know Tico's going to kind of want to show that. I think it was on your first site plan. I know it was on the preliminary one, but we just don't want meters on the front of the house if we can okay. try to avoid that. Okay. And going back to the windows, these are wood clad Sierra Pacific windows. So wood clad uh, vinyl? Uh, yes. Okay. And you clarified, I think in the enlarged elevations, you showed them as casements, but you clarified that they're single hung. Yes, yeah, single so hung. Single hung. All yes. the windows are single hung. Yes, all the windows will be single hung. Uh, one of the, uh, Mr. Vela has some comments about privacy with the windows. Have you been in discussions with him to modify the windows and address some of the privacy concerns? The issue with the with the privacy is about the amount of windows that we have to have on that kind of style. We have to have that amount of windows. Uh, we cannot remove windows to alter the 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 look of the house, the style of the house. Can we go to the west elevation? To I think that's where his concern was. So okay. Yeah, I think the concern, what I'm hearing, is that this is predominantly a single-story neighborhood, and we're going in here with some two stories with a, a there's a house contributing structure right to the west of this, right? Yeah. So there's some concerns with that, and I guess it would be interesting to see if the windows kind of line up directly across from each other, if they're kind of skewed, or do you have any information on, on that? No. We... The issue is will be for the bedrooms because we have bedrooms on that side. Right. Uh, we have this bedroom on this side, and it's is. Two. So what's that window into the kitchen underneath the stairs? This is underneath the stairs. And we don't need this window. It's just that for that type of uh, style, we, ha we cannot have blank uh, elevation. But that, if that will be uh, something that will take, approve the project, I don't have any problem to remove windows. But because we don't need this window on the stair, 
we don't need this window underneath of the stair. The only window that I need is this for the bedrooms. And I can have just one. I don't even have to have two. It's just we did it in order to keep the style of the, of the, of the house. We don't want blank uh, elevations, but we will be happy to remove windows if that will. Yeah, I think, I, and maybe that's to help help you with the neighbors. Maybe the the window in the the kitchen underneath the stairs could be eliminated. I'm okay with the one up at the front by the, the stairs going up to the second floor. Maybe that just kind of simplifies things. And I will be happy to do thing. it. I will be happy to do it. Okay. The window under the stairs isn't even doing anything. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's my point. So one of the windows that I put there is because I have to I have to have windows on that black that, face. Yeah, and I and I see that, and I know how it translates up to the second floor, and that, I think that's okay. The the commission is generally okay with you know omitting one in certain locations as long as you maintain that pattern. I think the pattern, the rhythm of your window placement is is excellent. You know, for for everything, and I think there's just some neighborly things, especially when you have houses so close together that we try to do things, little things that to help out. But how would that window function? Because it, it seems like it's behind a wall, and I'm not sure really. It's on the needle. The stair is more decoration than another thing. Okay. But it's working because on the section, the stair is go up of the top of the window. It didn't, it didn't interfere to the window. It will be basically a, a, a window for a closet. But I, I create that window, again, to have the look of the elevation. Okay. Well, we're kind of on that as well. Um, since the sidewalk is on the west side of the house and people are walking from parking on the north side, walking along the west side of the house, is there any lighting on the west side of the house as well? We might want to consider the something. lighting is on the back and on the on the front. So no not lighting on the, on the side, side of the not house. on the side. Okay. That's really not good. That uh, doesn't yeah. sound safe. We it might be something to consider, but it's also something you know we, we would want to consider with the neighbors as well, you know, so that you, know, you don't have a light shining in one of their windows. <laughs> as well. yes. I don't want a light over there. I mean, that's, right. that's only kind of three, three foot no. four anyways, a three foot sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not a whole lot of, lot of area anyways, but um, you know, sometimes we see these plans that mm -hmm. have the... The thing that we can propose maybe is to have mm -hmm. that circulation between the two houses and that way won't be any circulation to the neighbors. If that will be a condition, I don't have problem with that. And basically, the circulation will be the, between the two houses, and in that way, no circulation will be to the neighbors. If that you put that at condition, I will be happy to yeah. do it. Yeah, and because you, you can control that as well, right? So yes, it's not that big deal. Side, it's just right? to move it to the other side. Yeah, and then you can control that and design it so that the two houses, as people walk through, it's you know something. We can propose that. We can nice we can change that on the. We can just switch it. It's not a big deal. So, uh, any other questions for the applicants? No. Okay. Uh, so we talked about a few a uh, few things with some questions. You have a few minimum five minutes for a rebuttal. If you want to summarize any comments or address any concerns that the board has mentioned or you've heard from the public, uh, now's the time. No, I understand the concern for the for the for the neighbors, and we will be happy to. Is I mean, if you tell me, okay, we we will approve this with the condition that you move the sidewalk to the to the middle. I don't think that will be a big problem to do it. If you tell me, okay, remove a couple of windows from the underneath the stair or underneath the or for the window on the on the other side of the stair. I will be happy to do it. You can just. Approve with that condition. I will be, I will be happy to work with the staff to get that done. Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and close the public hearing. We can have a uh, discussion of the case in front of us amongst the commissioners as well. Should we do that too? Comments. Um, there's conditions that you know if we lay out some of these conditions specifically the items that you guys have spoken to. Um, is the communication with the neighbors in aligning a lot of, I mean, they brought some points to the table which are valid, um, and I, it just concerns me, the communication with the neighbors to bring this to a successful project completion. I think it can be, 
um, but it seems like some of the things they brought up are concerning and don't appear to be complete. Um, sorry. Sorry, sir. Um, doesn't appear to be complete, and that just concerns me because I think the neighbors have, the, the community around it has brought up some valid points. Um, and then it seemed to be, there were a couple things that just didn't feel complete. The gutters, for example, either they are or they are not on the project that's being presented in front of us. Um, you know, things like that. It's like it didn't feel complete to come to us, mm -hmm. is just my take. No, g given that the um, alley was never vacated, mm -hmm. so uh, it's still an existing alley with the, the, the city, I think the, pro the project has its rights, is within its rights to use the alley. I However, I, I do agree that um, there, there are things that the project can do, as we kind of discussed, and um, <laughs> ask questions of that could make the project more neighborly. Um, I, I would like to see the project come back and show more detail of like the, na the neighboring properties as well, especially for the house as it just just directly adjacent west, right? And then so maybe show how some of the windows can be lined up and, and certain things like that. Um, some of the changes we kind of asked in questions and that were kind of proposed to of moving this, you know, the sidewalk to the east side of this house and in between the two new developments uh, as well to kind of detail some of that and, you know, co coming back and show probably showing drainage and showing everything kind of being collected and, you know, bubbling out to, to 11th Street uh, yeah. on the south side of the house as well to, to, to address the concerns of, um, of drainage and stuff like that, and of soil erosion on, on neighboring properties to to kind of kind of make this successful and um, yeah, because I didn't see that and I didn't understand that in the in what we talked about today. Um, I would like to also see some comment made relative to the properties to the east. No one has spoken of those at all, and. Um, when you were talking about match, matching the retaining wall, it would be nice to be sure that staff has had an approval of that pro product so that, you know, to say that it's going to match doesn't <coughs> always mean that it does. And I think the other thing that we're talking quietly amongst ourselves, right? Okay, thank you. Um, I think the other thing that I, I in the pictures that Ron showed in the beginning presentation that he gave of the surrounding community, they are all single story properties. Doesn't mean we can't have, and this just feels like it's stepping in incorrectly. It feels like it's stepping, it looks like it's stepping in incorrectly in the, in the fabric of the community. I like the project, I like the homes, I like how they're laid out. I just have a hard time seeing them correctly on these property, on these lots, in conjunction with how the surrounding community appears. Mm -hmm. Did I miss that? Am I seeing that incorrectly? Well, I think this is, um, we've had this block in front of us before a couple, we couple have. months ago. We and have. I think it's, what I keep wrestling with is this is a, a block that's been occupied by the same people for many, many years. They know this block, they love this block. You know, I think the, the people that we heard in public comment, their family has lived on this block for many, many years and they right. will all take pride in this. Um, you know, I think there's an assumed ownership there. And we remember we have we felt like on the, on the east side, we heard about the people that parked there for the church and, and the gentleman, you know, right. was parking right. in, this, in this alley and it's yeah. like, well, like, yeah, it's, he's, been occupying the alley, but it's still an open, unimproved alley, and it's, I think it's part of the growing pains of development that's going through this area. Um, you know, and I think this is a unique block, and, and they, they have, you know, I think they have a passion and a, and a love for this block. They take a lot of pride in this. Uh, their family's been there for many years, and I think that's kind of, kind of the pains here. Yes, that alley is pretty close to the, the property on 10th Street. Um, you know, I don't. I don't have any issues with the with the proposed project going on here. I think it's well de defined, uh, designed, well detailed. A few minor things that kind of went went awry. The, the gutters and downspouts. What is that going to show up or not going to show up? There's also, you know, if we can do kind of help facilitate some neighborly things that could be done in the design. And I think these. You know, we didn't have these letters 
when we were reviewing the packet, they, they, they came in Sunday that. night, Monday. So yeah. I was trying to review these during the during the, the presentation. Um, so there, there, you know, I think there's a concern there, but on a whole, I think the project is is good. And if we could do a couple things, uh, the staff is certainly capable of working with the, the client on a retaining wall. Um, they're removing a window, moving that sidewalk between the two houses that can keep <coughs> the, the, the new addition in, in, inside. inside. Um, and then the gutter with the piping, you know, he verbally told us that's going to happen. We've seen it in a previous plan. Somehow it got left off, but that doesn't really affect the aesthetics, but it addresses some of the concerns that the, the neighbors have. So I think that's a, a good solution all the way around. Um, and, you know, I think the project looks pretty good. It may, maybe we didn't really look at it with, uh, you know, with all the other houses on that, on that block, and then most of them, all of them are single story, uh, with a couple, now you're putting in some two story houses, mm -hmm. so it's gonna they look, are gonna look gonna a little, feel different. little different, but you don't have any privacy issues on the second floor. It's only on the first floor, and you know if we work with them to, to modify the windows, remove that window, and everything. I think, I think it's still a nice project for the for the for the neighborhood and the block. But we can have more discussion on that too. No, I think your points are valid. You bring up some valid points. The little guy's going to uh, come out about your microphone if you don't talk into it. <laughs> he comes out of the dark and tells you he can't hear you. And so the next is to, to craft a motion, right? And so then the idea is like, so you're pretty comfortable with him working with staff to kind of mirror the house, um, maybe put some conditions on that too, to, put some conditions. To, to make sure yeah. like, you know, the gutters are in, uh, the drainage is, is proper, um, you know, switching the sidewalks um, and working on staff at the windows. Um, anything else that we would like to add for the conditions? So was this the um, staff report photographs show several large trees on the property that don't show up anywhere on any of the site plans, and I think they just need to be sure that they are in compliance with the tree ordinances that are um, within the city's jurisdiction. Okay. Like yeah. it's right in the middle of the other house. Yeah, that might be on the the property of the east though, right? So which we'll review next. Because that's a separate that's a separate yeah. thing. that's a separate project. There was one of the site plans that had some trees removed and even this yeah. one on the front right oh, okay. here. Right, right. That was X'd out. <laughs> I'm not sure about the ones in the back. Yeah. It could be on the other side of the alley. But either way, I mean, just that's really fun or just jurisdiction because you have to meet natural resources anyway, correct? With or without right. us, our comments, correct? So, um, so let me make sure our, our conditions. So we got the sidewalk, the gutters, um, the west windows. We'll the west windows and staff. Are there any other? Are we are we motioning these together or separately? So we're motioning separately. separately. So the, the, this so is west, this house. The west house. Yeah. Okay, the west. Okay. okay. So I have three conditions. Anything else? I have four. I have the gutters with the pipe, gutters with the piping, the yep. sidewalks between the two houses, removing the window, and the retaining wall to work with staff on oh, yeah. maintaining the historic character. Gutter. Okay, got it. All right. So then we'll move for uh, final approval with conditions. So move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in BLC 24-13 for the property located at 926 East 11th Avenue with the following conditions, that the applicant work with staff to mirror the sidewalk to the east side of the house, um, that they ensure that, that the, the house has gutters and ADS piping and drainage so that it drains to the, to the to what, what, what was it, 11th Avenue on the south side of that, on the south side of the house, so it does not in, impact property, adjacent properties around it. Um, that it, the applicant worked with staff to adjust the windows on the west side of the house uh, to be, to act in more neighborly fashion, and that the applicant worked with staff to, uh, to make sure that the, the rebuilding of the retaining wall is in character of, the, of its historic aspect. 
uh, because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Ebor City Design Guidelines of the City of Tampa for the following reason, that it meets the design criteria for new construction in terms of height and width, facade width, setback, spacing, alignment, similarity of details and forms, and building materials. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, for the applicant, there's been a number of conditions placed on that, this application. Uh, those four items are work with staff on the retaining wall, the removal of the windows on the first floor, the combination of the sidewalks and the gutters with piping. Is the applicant okay with these conditions? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, the applicant has indicated yes. All in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good morning, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. Moving to the next agenda item, which is BLC 24-14. This is for the address of 928 East 11th Avenue. Currently, it's a vacant parcel with the underlying zoning of YC2. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction for a single-family residence with site improvements. I believe that everybody's familiar with the site. I showed the photo presentation earlier, so we can move right into the presentation at this time. Okay, this is the this is the next house. Um, this is the rendering for the next house facing. Uh, the, you can see the retaining wall, the welcome walls. That is the different that we have for the other one. The columns, the ta the taper columns, the color of the house, the brackets, uh, and the color of the siding, the stock on the bottom, and the columns. Uh, the brick veneers, the veneers columns on this side. This is the side plan. Uh, this this side was goes to the west side of the property. And we will do, according with the, just, we will do the same for the next house to have the sidewalk on this side. Um, the configuration of the project is similar. It's basically a two feet uh, distance between the, the sidewalk and this. It's, it's exactly the same, it's exactly the same level, it's exactly the same grade. The properties are just side by side. Uh, the design of the house of the, a square foot, the setback, the length, the the back, the everything is exactly is exactly the same. The only the big change on the on the house are the elevation and the type of elevations. The overhang will be the same. The width of the the width of the setback on the side will be the same. It's the it's the same property. Uh, we have more trees on this, but we already have a uh, arbor report that the trees are in a really bad shape, and we have report from natural resources about that. Uh, this is the average setback certified by the surveyor with the dimension from us for from all the properties. That's the one that we're going to use. Uh, the same alley, the same connection. We extend this on the other one, we extend this farther to have this entry. The columns, the path, the concrete columns. The elevations, welcome wall. The wall, the retaining wall goes, this retaining wall will go inside the property. We, will have the, we, we won't have the same problem because most of that wall was already removed. This is the other side, the sidewalk on this side. Uh, I will work again with the, with the staff about if we remove or not remove these windows. Anyway, this will be with the, with the next house, with the house that we propose. This is the back, the same layout, the same space for the AC, the same space for the garbage cans the same tree, the same lamps on the back. We have a couple of lamps on the back of the property to light the... This is the elevations. We, 
basically is, is the same finish, is the same material. The, the big difference will be welcome walls, columns, taper, uh, trim. This will be a taper column. The color will be different. The windows. The same height, the same width of the house, the same dimension between the existing grade to the top. Side elevations would be exactly the same. Back elevation, the other side. The layout, the floor plan of the, of the two houses is the same. The same porch. The construction will be exactly the same, concrete block wall on the first floor, uh, pre-engineered trusses on the, on the flooring, and the second floor stops two by six, bearing walls. Exposed rafter, two by six. The gutter that I say is like a little, it's, it's, it's a plate that they install here. It's, called, it's a historic gutter. It's a plate that they install here and the gutter do like this. I will work with the staff about the details of that gutter. I have it for another project. We already, I already show you this detail for the column. How are we gonna wrap the column around? The height of the, of the second floor, the railing. The same section. The details for the windows, for the Sierra Pacific, the doors, window seal, um, historic window seal, trims around windows, eight inches, six inches, is the details for the neighbors. This is a two-story house on the side of the, on that area. And this is the two projects together. We will move this to here to have the same sidewalk. The gables are different, the brackets are different, uh, the color is different, the columns are different on the second floor. First floor is taper. Uh, Welcome walls. We we try to do a, a even though looks is the same historic uh, design, but looks different. I will move this to this side to help the neighbors with privacy. This concludes my presentation. Good morning, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. For BLC 24-14, staff finds that this application is consistent with the Ybor City Design Guidelines. There are two uh, letters that were submitted into this record as well. And once again, we do have transportation here to answer any questions. Uh, moving to page three of the staff report under conditions. Just as a general understanding, when we get new construction, the first thing that staff looks at is the setback and elevation from grade that is consistent with the fabric along that block or the immediate blocks if there's no fabric within the, the context. So that information has been provided. I believe the uh, alley discussion will take the form of the prior discussion. Maybe there's some new information that the public might want to put into the record for discussion, but I think that's already uh, has a good uh, way moving forward. 
Uh, the retaining wall, as presented, there is no encroachment. They're moving it back into the private property. And the agent has stated that he will move the internal circulation to be compatible interior with um, the, uh, the other structure that was uh, presented. That we had some concerns with the uh, knee brackets and the location prior. The knee brackets were relocated to be more consistent uh, with the form that was presented. He did discuss the overhangs and the introduction of the gutters to encapsulate the uh, stormwater to meet City of Tampa code. And just the last issue I have is if you could go to the front elevation, please, with the two structures side by side. Um, it's, it's a little foreign to have a pier and columns on the bottom floor, which is acceptable and, and period appropriate, then to replicate that on the top floor. Usually there's a, a simplified, just a column on the top floor um, that, that shows the hierarchy of, of the construction type. So if that could be addressed, if the board feels that that is warranted of a discussion. That concludes my portion. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Vila. Anyone here wishing to, from the public wishing to comment, please go come on up. Good morning again. As I stated previously, my name is Tamara Taylor and I reside at 924 and a half East 11th Avenue. I am here to address comments um, that were made during the review of BLC 2414 and that apply to BLC 2413 regarding the alleyway abutting 2201 North 10th Street. Um, I would like to state for the record that we have not assumed ownership of this alleyway, but that the city of Tampa has allowed this use for more than 50 years and that this use has been acknowledged by historic preservation for nearly 20 years, namely in the form of a craftsman style shed that is behind 2201 North 10th Street. 924 and a half East 11th Avenue and 924 East 11th Avenue. Additionally, as Commissioner Salaga has pointed out, there are additional trees that are not addressed in the architect's packet. Those trees are directly located behind 924 and a half East 11th Avenue and would be in the pathway of that alley. Therefore, we again formally request time to file a request for a resolution with the city of Tampa to close the alleyway. And if this time will not be granted by this board, we then ask for time and financial assistance to comply with the proposed use of the alleyway as this project will incur expenses for moving the existing fence and for moving a shed that was built um, to mirror the historic design of the uh, properties that have been previously approved by Historic Preservation. Thank you. Everybody, this is Chris Vela again. Um, I'm going to be brief here. Um, I re recalled when we were talking, well, I'm talking about BLC uh, 14 or 20, 24-14. Transportation seemed to be concerned about the clearance between 2201 North 10th Street um, and the alley. Um, and there was some light talk about having a bollard being placed there. Um, it sounds like this hasn't really been thought through in great detail. And I, I once served on the BLC, and we have to look out for historic structures. And right now, what I'm hearing from the petitioner is that this is a single family residence. All the single family residents in this block park on the street. We don't require to park behind our house. Um, and so we're placing this alley here, servicing this petitioner's property only, and we're putting a contributing structure that's over 100 years old at risk of being hit by a car. So realize that your decisions today could jeopardize the urban fabric of this block if this car were to hit this structure. Um, now let me go into a little bit about the alley while I'm concerned about the flooding. If you look in the site plan, I, I can't refer to the actual sheet, there is some mounting that's coming up and there is a ribbon way. And I know that there was some discussion that you're doing the ribbon way or the ribbon pattern would allow more water uh, infiltration in the ground. But we're concerned about that because that water could spread deeper into the site. And again, these houses are on grade. So you make that soil below the house unstable. And because of the proximity, which is under 30 inches from the alley from 2201, and also from the shed that's bearing on grade, which is not shown in the site plan, it also puts these structures at risk. So realize that um, we worked really hard to make these structures 100% contributing to the neighborhood. 
And now we're putting an alleyway servicing a single family residence behind there, which isn't, doesn't even fit the, the operational function of the neighborhood. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense putting these structures at risk to doing that. Um, so, and, and, and lastly, I, I think just for a matter of consistency, we would prefer to have gutters on, the, on this structure for, for number 14. Um, while they, the neighbors to the east don't have the issue because there's a driveway between them and this property, um, we would still like to have the water just deeply mitigated and appropriately connected to stormwater. We're just concerned, again, just flooding underneath that whole area, and that's going to cause some instability on these structures. They're, they're very old, so we have to be delicate with them. Thank you. Any, anyone else wishing to comment? I'm sorry. <clears throat> when I was sitting here listening, I thought my son-in-law was going to address the issue. The issue is the alley. Please, please identify yourself for the record. Yeah. And, yeah. Benny Taylor, I'm sorry. I'm just worked up. I'm so emotional over this. I've been a property owner over there. And I've been in the area all my life. And this is becoming a hardship for us because if they paved the alley, they have very soft sand over there. And our house is sitting right on the alley. And you can see where the tears are there. And the rainwater washes the dirt away that's holding the piers for the house to sit on, which is no foundation in the ground whatsoever. And this, to me, is going to be a burden for me to try to keep my house stabilized so that it doesn't go down into the ground from the water that is being piped into the area, plus the rainwater that's coming down. I have to maintain that area right where my house is to the alley. I have to put bricks and rocks or whatever in there to keep the water from washing the dirt away from under the piers that's holding the house up. My problem here is how are we going to be able to stabilize that area if they come in and pave it? Because there will be no way for the water to evaporate into the ground. And it's going to be coming over because where my house sitting, just reverse this, you're uphill, my house is downhill. The water comes down the hill, right by the, the footage of my house and washes the dirt out from under the fields. How will I be able to stabilize my house so that the pier doesn't go down into the ground and my house cracks. If you could address that situation, I wish you would, and if it was possible, I would like for you to take a field trip and come out there and look and see the condition which my house is in where the water is coming down the hill. Uh, thank you for your consideration, and I hope and pray that you make a just decision. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other, anybody else from the public wishing to comment? Seeing none, uh, we'll uh, ask some questions of the applicant uh, regarding their plans. Uh, Debbie, would you like to start? I think I would like to see a, um, a site plan that clarifies where each of these properties are relative to these, this, these proposed new construction. Because I have to say that I am confused as to whose property is where because it doesn't show up on the site plan. Can you, relative to all these addresses that we're talking about, 924 and a half, East 11, 924. Can this you is enlarge that site plan a little bit so we can? I just tried to show the, the whole alley. The alley is coming from here 
from here goes all the way straight. Yeah, I get that. But where are the properties, these folks, the neighbors? Where the neighbors, the property that the neighbor is talking about is this property. And which address is that? That is... Uh, I believe the address he has highlighted is 2201 North 10th Street. And then as Mr. Bella pointed out in his comments, there are three houses on one parcel of land that, are, that is directly west of the 926 East address. Mm -hmm. um, those are 924 and a half, um, which faces south, 924, which faces south, and 2201, which faces west. Do you have an aerial of that area? No, I don't, uh, but Ron, Ron should have it. And we kind of have one in our sort of packet. <clears throat> I, we can propose something that maybe will will improve this area. That basically we have we have a permit to extend the alley to here, on this area that is 942 and 946. If we we can extend the alley to here without going through this house. And if your staff are okay and, and, and right away is okay with that, we don't have to improve this area of the alley. We just improve. We already have permit. We are already how we, we right away from here to here, to 942 and 946. We can extend it to here just and don't go through. It that will... Hmm. It that will help with the issue with the neighbor. Well, well, and I think we've seen also in our packet some pictures of, uh, well, in, in the letters from the, uh, Mr. Fela and Ms. Tomorrow, uh, that there is also some sheds and there's also some concern with trees that are left on site. Can you address some of that in a little bit more detail? Does that shed actually was placed inside the alley or is that someone's property that abuts the alley? And in mindful, it's like, it's still an unapproved open alley, so that's public right away. So to move forward with this request, the agent spoke with staff, with myself, to look at a solution moving forward that will appease everybody at this particular time. As indicated, there is already a, a right of way permit that has been granted from this is part of the alley, which is center. This is 30 foot wide, and then it comes to the west, and this is a 10 foot wide alley. It has already been granted and, and moving forward with this part of the alley. The alley could be continued in this fashion to the subject sites and not incorporate anything to the west of the, the western subject site. So these structures will not be affected with the request if the alley is changed and the condition that just was brought up. So Which just so I clarify, you're proposing that entrance into the alley comes from the original from there. From here, yes. And from instead here, of the 10th from Street. Here. That's correct. Okay, so you're proposing entrance into the alley comes from the original so they would come in and then turn down the alley and they would only be able to go to the site that were taught the sites that we're talking about today and it would, it stop would terminate there. here okay uh, i don't know transportation here i don't know if they need to improve the alley all the way or not but what's in question is behind the these houses here there's some trees and some sheds that were just brought up now they will be uninterrupted if the alley is just improved to this point and terminated here so right where you had your paper clip yes that little white spot is the shed that we're talking about. I think you're accurate with that assessment, yes. Google Maps. But it is not encroaching. The shed does not encroach into the alley. Uh, I correct? can't comment on that. I, I can't be 100% accurate with that. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. In the photograph that is in attached to one of the letters that accompanied our packet, 
there shows a chain link fence. Is that chain link fence along the property line of those? That chain link fence uh, surrounds 924 and a half, 924, and a portion of 2201. Can you point out uh, and those? Where is yeah. yeah, those houses on the. On the <laughs> Barely. <map there. laughs> May I use your paper clip? Yes. So if the green, if the green portion is the 926 address that we are discussing, the 924 and a half is directly west. The chain link fence abuts the property line there, okay. um, and then it goes behind and adjoins with 2201, which is the structure facing west. Thank you. So it's all on that larger parcel. <laughs> So the chain link fence covers that whole, those, those lots right there at the end, the whole chain link fence Correct. covers them all. Correct. So there's currently no chain link fence along the alley at the moment? Um, I think there is a portion of the chain link, chain link fence that is not, um, that was not erected by Benny and Dorothy Taylor. I think it's another property, adjoining properties fence line. Um, that would be behind 926 and 928. To um, Commissioner's question earlier, is that little white blob, is that the shed we're talking about? Um, I cannot see that on okay. here. Okay. I, 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 sure I think it is. I just want to make sure we don't have something else. Well, based on your information I, I and your living in the, in the property. I'm sorry, can you speak up? I can't that's the shed or that is not the shed? Um, I, I can't really oh, see that well enough. I mean, we have a shed in our backyard. That's what, that's the answer I can give you, whether this image is depicting that shed, because there are other things, um, both on our property and behind our property. I cannot definitively tell you that that image, um, that I'm seeing on here is in fact our shed. There are other sheds and things in that general vicinity. Um, okay. yeah. you. you're welcome. I mean, if you thought, thank you. I mean, if you follow that down, I mean, there's, I mean, we ran into the same issue when we were facing this, the yeah. new project down here, that there was, it's been, <coughs> it's been you know, for so long. It's been abandoned. I mean, yeah. the property owners have been taking care it. of it, but, you know, they, you know, roach on them right away. They think it's closed. It's not. You know, I think there's a, you know, they, I think they've all been operating under the understanding that these, that alley was closed for this notification. Um, I think that would be helpful if we stop the alley improvement right there and not. I like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because uh, I think there's legitimate concerns there with the structure and if the applicant's willing to do that. Now, a question for 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 you. Uh, you are not required to have on-site parking with this project, correct? Oh, or are you required on-site? One to car. Per city, of code, per city of Tampa code, one car on site. So the other That's what's driving this. Okay, so that, you're right. So they are, he is required to have one car on site, whether everyone else that in that block, historically, is grandfathered in and having no, no on-site mm -hmm, parking requirements. Mm -hmm. So that's why everyone parks on the street. But now with the updated code, he's required to have one. He's providing two, it looks like. Mr. Marsh, if you'd like to come up. <laughs> one, one car per unit. Two, no, they're single family no, doesn't There's no duplex. Right. And he's okay. providing two because he's going the full width. I mean, he can narrow that down a little bit and provide one car, but I mean, it's helpful that, to have a two car That width. isn't going to make much difference. No, especially when you start getting in transportation standards with backup clearances, they'd rather have a wider right. berth there to get into a 10 foot wide alley. So it is a requirement. That's how they're yeah. choosing to cite that. Okay. The project which preserves the street front. Yes. Yep. Is the um, alley the suggestion that you're proposing is to bring the automobiles in from the other end of the block and then turn the corner and come down to these houses? Is that alley clear enough? It, uh, there's nothing encroaching into it, structures or or other elements that would prohibit being able to do that. Because no. on this, it looks like they've dashed in the property lines. And on 12th Avenue, it appears 
that there is a garage or some other structure at the rear of that property that goes over the property line. Yes. Thanks, Marsha. It's an open alley. I understand there was some confusion as to whether it was vacated or not. Um, there are, their code enforcement has gone out to there and they have communicated to me that they found fences and objects in the alley and the people will be cited and they have to remove those things, period, regardless of whether this case goes forward at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I have several alleys on my property in South Tampa and you know there are things that happen and people do them at their own risk. Um, some things have gone unnoticed for 30 years, but someday something may change. Um, as for him stopping that access for that, to protect that house, that still does not prohibit a vehicle from transiting out to the west if they can navigate that right. space, if they want to go off-roading in their car. It's still an open alley. Right. So if the, if the applicants want to go forward and vacate the alley, then, I mean, when I researched it, it was kind of tricky. But, you know, one of the general rules is, you know, as somebody who has a vacated alley on one side of my property is you've been paying property taxes all these years and, and your legal description gets very complicated because it says you have one half of, let's say, 10 foot alley, five foot. So to me, it was pretty obvious that legally it was open, but what's apparent we see all the time is they haven't been maintained and people put stuff in. So in the recommendation of stopping it at his projects and letting the community move forward with the city as far as vacating that portion of the alley? The or city does like not, okay, I have been instructed in the past that transportation does not support, support partial vacatings. Uh, okay. uh -huh. So. I'm not going to say it never happens. It's a new era right. in the city, and, and there's a lot more creativity going on. I, I meet with the transportation engineer weekly. Uh, we have a weekly call where we bring up stuff. I'll certainly go talk about the concerns with that house, what things they might suggest. But I'm not a transportation engineer, you know, so I can't. But I think in, in relationship to this project and what was being proposed as far as the um, alley participants, coming in from that other end, coming in and going up, and our applicant can stop his alley work at his property lines. And then yes, for the, the purpose rest of him can, navigating. Other people can yes. deal with that stuff. Yes, yes. For, and that for, doesn't have to be a part of this project and what we're correct. looking at You're correct. I mean, I would, I'll bring that up with the, again with the engineer today and see what he thinks about it. You may not have a problem with that. But yeah, that would continue to go forward. Because I think it also suffices the community's request to give them time to figure out their portion of the alley. I don't know that the rest of it has to be vacated just because they would like to address their part. But it at least allows this applicant to continue to move forward with this project. Okay, thank so you. The, so the city, city, so Sorry. the city of Tampa is okay with extending access for this project from the east. I can't completely say that, I, I, it, mm. because that would be part of the right-of-way approval process mm. in which right. the transportation, the, 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 the city transportation engineer or his designee looks at that. Well, that's already a process for the... For a part of it. For the additional part, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's a lot of weirdness out there at the alley sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I've, I've been out there and sometimes you're like, what is this structure doing? You know, there's like a pipe coming out of the ground. That's a and critical piece of infrastructure or something. That's why it's, it takes yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, you have hole, light poles back there. And, and unfortunately, it's a great place for the poor trees. You know, it's the only place that they've been able to grow all over the city are these old underused alleys and, you know. So uh, just to make sure we understand this, the, the applicant has to go through a, a right-of-way permit to basically modify that right -of -way. The utilities look at it. Stormwater works very hard and works very closely regarding some of these other issues. I mean, if that one property owner was talking about the drainage, he should contact Stormwater Department. I can give them some, a contact right. and they can look at. And, and it's the applicant's cost burden. They have to go through the application process to vacate a portion of the alley, whatever, well, not vacated. Not They're, vacated. They, to, operate in, it, in an existing right way, but it's also at the applicant's expense to improve that for their use. Yeah, to the city it. of Tampa standard that the, yeah. 
but code, code enforcement's getting involved because any of these other homes that are on that block have been notified that you're encroachment in the alley and the alley's going to... Yeah, be... sometimes they, it's a byproduct. Uh, for example, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, to, the, the way we kind of have a reactive code enforcement process in the city. Okay, I had neighbors on either side that were in a code war years ago. What? A code war. They were calling. They were calling code enforcement on each other. I'm sure me? people around here job? have 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 been there. And I was in the middle. And I know the code enforcement officer. He's very diligent. Sure. And he would look at his prop, this property, and he would look at that property. And as he scanned, he would look at my house. And I had some stuff on the side of my 1930s garage that was there. And then I got nailed for it because I just happened to be. In the line of fire. They are, they are compelled, <laughs> if they see it, to, to, to cite it. So, you know, sometimes as we're doing redevelopment, things happen. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we're still like, asking questions now. Maybe ask more questions of the applicant? No, or? I'll, um, I'll hold off for the moment. I may come back. Sure. Yeah, that I don't have any further questions. Nope, I'm good. Okay, well, I, um, I'd like to go back to the site plan a little bit um, and go through the, the larger <laughs> site plan where we talk about the tree removal. I, I kind of like to get a better, I mean, if you zoom in there, I think that kind of covers it. It looks like there's like a, on the other site plan, that, that tree that's right there, on, right on the property line. Uh, nope, down further south. Uh, too far. This right one? about the 40.35. Yeah. Right so that looks like a, an actual tree tree, like an oak, maybe. I don't know. Maybe the other site plan is a better way we, to. We have a, we have a arborist report. Uh, we already have comment from Natural Resources, and the tree is C10. We, C10. It's, it's, it's in a bad condition, yeah. and we have uh, approval to remove it. Okay. And I noticed some notes on there for mitigation of trees. So what's, what's your plan with, with that? Uh, that will be on the construction process that I have to discuss that with the natural resources about how, how mitigate that. Usually they, they have some mitigation for that kind of tree and we have to notify neighbors and we have right. to do another process. So you're gonna, but your general plan is probably to replant some trees on site and also probably pay into the tree mitigation fund? Exactly. We, okay, usually so we, only, we only have a space for one or two trees, right. and whatever is above that for the requirement, we have to pay to the tree fund. Okay. So basically, in a, in a nutshell, all the trees that are on site are not in very good health, exactly. and your plan is to remove all of them. Exactly. Okay. All right, so on the... Um, Let's look at some of, some of the elevations, I guess. The, uh, actually, when we're talking about the floor plan, you're not mirroring. The floor plan is going to be the same. So yes. your corridor side, as it was in the previous project, your corridor side was on the east side. So you can travel. That's your public. And now on your new project, that's also going to be on the east side. You're, you're not mirroring one to put that common area in the middle. No. Okay. And I think that's fine. I just want to make sure we're... Uh, clarified there. So um, is this the same type of brick that you're using on the previous project, like that that tan type of for brick? For the retaining wall, yes. Uh, no, for the pilasters. Yeah, it will be the same brick. Same will be brick, brick so veneers, like, yes. Okay, okay. and uh, is there a house adjacent to this project on the, to the right side? Yeah, there is a house there. Okay. Yeah, there's a driveway. Drive, driveway. Then. Yeah, between this house and the and one that exists, okay. there's a driveway. Okay, and um, one of the staff's comments was that trim on the upper level column. Do you want to address that? I'm, I'm not sure it's necessary. I know you're, this one's a little bit more decorative. I, I think you can take that with the front door and the, the glass that's in there. The additional uh, buttons on the, on the windows. So you're making this a little bit more ornate than the other one. Um, do you want to address the, the front door glass and, and, you know, I think all the those things kind of relate column. to each other with the trim and the, the additional mullions and the front the, door. The front door will be exactly the same. We, we, we have a suggestion from the staff to remove the decoration from the front wall, from the front door on the glass. And I will take that advice. Uh, we just discussed that. 
but the trim will be exactly the same of the other house, will be six inch, uh, six inch trim around the, the doors and uh, on the top, but will be exactly the same trim. Okay. Yeah. And what about that trim up on the upper column? It seems like that's a, 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 a flat, straight column, and then once you hit the trim piece, it tapers in. Is that the intent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would be completely flat. We'll have the trim uh, on the edges will be completely flat here. The, tr the trim will be on the top of the column. Well, I think that his concern was this trim at the, at the right above the handrail. He says a lot of times those columns are just this one. But it would be difficult to taper that column sure. without that base on there, and there needs to be something to separate that. Yeah. I, I, I don't have an issue with that little piece of trim. I don't think it's substantial. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even, but so I just, it was a staff comment. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Um, you're allowed five minutes for rebuttal or summary of comments. Is there anything that you'd like to uh, address for the board? No. No comments? Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing and we can have discussion of the case amongst ourselves. That's when we talk quietly. Oh, we're talking quietly amongst ourselves? Yes. Um, one question I had is we, we addressed windows in our previous motion, correct? Mm -hmm. Removing, window. Removing okay. one window. And do we need to address that same in this motion? Because our, the windows, I'm just checking myself because the windows this side of the house goes into an open driveway, <coughs> not necessarily into somebody else's home. Okay. This I, just, space and there's no neighbor that came up I just wanted to make sure I was tracking. Those, I think those are all of my questions. Although I'd have them, I think I'd have them kind of remove that window on the first floor that goes into the closet. Under, under, under the stairs. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> and I think we've heard that the gutters, the downspouts, the stormwater, all the half rounds are the same. The sidewalk, they consolidate one. Uh, yeah. Retaining wall is, is going to be new. It's inside the property, so there's no encroachment. Um, I think our discussion also has to do with the, the alley and what we're going to kind of That'd direct be, to them yeah. to say, hey, this it needs to stop there. At least give the, uh, you know, I think the public time if they do want to try to vacate that alley to do that section. But I think there's some conflicting information here because transportation is going to come by and say, it's a functioning alley, it needs to open all the way through. So, uh, you know, I think we need to get, get them some attention there, some help if we can. Yeah. And I think as we go forward on this one, we just need to look at it um, to Dennis, Dennis's suggested proposal of having him come in off that other entrance and have him be responsible for the alley up to the edge of his properties. He, should, he wouldn't be responsible for the rest of the alley all the way out to 10th Street, right? Well, it's not You're all looking at me right. like I'm on drugs. It's come on, drive with me. <laughs> Well, right, because they're just paying for what they're improving, right? So, right. So it portion. would only go to his property, and then the homeowners mm -hmm. can address with transportation the rest of that alley, because it wouldn't be his problem. Correct. It wouldn't but be his responsibility. That isn't what we approved in the last in the previous, in the previous project. Mm -hmm. Can we retroactively? Yeah, we need to, fi we need to fix that because we've <laughs> we've had lengthy discussion about. Allowing it to go up to his property edge and then letting, allowing the homeowners time to work with whoever they need to work with to do whatever they want to try and do with the rest of that alley. It, so but I, we did not say that on the previous project. Can that we go back and included. fix that? Can we amend? <coughs> That's the question. Um, uh, you would do a motion to reconsider the previous vote, and then you would take a new motion and new conditions, um, and then you would approve the, okay. the subsequent motion. So we can change it. Yeah, okay. in the same meeting, a motion to reconsider. Okay, thank you. Good thing she, she's our exactly. rule keeper, keeps us in line. God knows we'd be all over the place. I think we, I would okay. suggest that we do that. I think we need to do that and allow, number one, this gentleman to move forward with his projects. And then number two, it also allows the homeowners, the property owners to on the that west. back end, yeah, to the west, <coughs> to address the alley with whoever they need to address it with. It's not conflicting the two. That's my but take on it. But bear in mind that they, as the transportation indicated, that regardless of 
which end of the alley gets improved with this project. It is an open and functioning alley and these people who, the pe people who will be moving into this property have the right to exit towards the west as well as towards the east. You are correct. That I think they do have that right. However, in light of, I think, the things that have been brought to our attention and, and what we understand this to be, in order for this gentleman to be able to move forward with his projects, I think that can be a, mm -hmm. a solution that can work for now. And, and it allow, I think it accommodates both, allows him to move forward, and it allows the homeowners to address what they want to. The city may come back and tell those property owners, no, it's, we're gonna open it and then, and okay, that's between the property. Of course, going to get notified because the, yeah. they've got a fence blocking the alley. Yeah, the I mean, there's going to be other so. other challenges that those property owners, I think, are going to have to work through with the city, transportation, whoever it is, on alley activity. Mm. They're going to have to do that. But I think that Ron's solution or proposed solution addresses this gentleman's projects being able to continue to move forward and it addresses the concerns the homeowners had. If I may add, um, Dana Crosby Collier with the legal department. We, um, Dennis and I were just discussing that um, since this new access has not been uh, reviewed by staff, as John Marsh mentioned, they would have to review it. Um, you would probably want to have a condition more akin to having staff work with mobility to assist this developer in coming up with a solution that will work for this project because we can't at this point if you direct him to come in through um, the 12th Street uh, 12th Avenue entrance down the alley and it hasn't been reviewed by staff so we don't know what is going to come of that review right so we need Didn't to they defer. review it on a previous project that, that but it only that went bar. to um, oh, a nice. couple of blocks you know the first shed you noticed on the um, it was behind the property that faces 11th behind that it doesn't go all the way down to the um, these two properties so it will need to be reviewed by staff so Got it. direct staff to work with mobility I think that would be your best bet to um, to come to a solution that would encourage your goals which is to have the access through 12th Mr. Chair, I would I just reemphasize the last part of what the legal counsel said. The, you know, you can direct us to work with mobility with a goal of coming off of the more northern entrance and to the to service this development. I think that'll give the public some reassurance that that's what you know the end goal is. But at this point, without those reviews, we're really uh, you know getting to a speculative area and what we can achieve. Understand. Um, any other discussion on the case, or I think we're pretty clear. Mm -hmm. So the, the, probably the same four conditions that we had before yeah. at a fit for the mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. um, for the staff to work <coughs> with, with mobility, mobility to yeah. determine a solution to come up access the alley from the east. So, so in that situation, do we even want to open up the last case then? At that point, if it hasn't been determined, we that they have can't to. even. I think we have, we have to. We have. We have conflicting information. So mm -hmm. uh, let's take care of this one. Then we'll go back and do another motion and add that other one. We'll make sure that's a, that's okay with the applicant as well along, yep. along the way. All right, so for our final approval with conditions, move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in BLC 24-14 for the property located at 928 East 11th Avenue with the following conditions, that the applicant uh, work with staff to fi finalize the gutter details and the drainage to 11th Avenue to the south of the property, that the applicant work with staff to uh, finalize the look of the retaining wall that is on the property, and that the applicant work with staff to finalize the, it would also be at the west windows on uh, the residence for, uh, for the project as well. Because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Ebor City Design Guidelines of the City of Tampa for the following reasons. That it meets the design criteria for new construction based on height and width, facade width, setback, spacing, alignment, similarity of details and forms, building materials. Oh, and I forgot to add that the, um, 
also as a condition that the applicant work with staff to uh, with staff and mobility to try to with the goal of obtaining the entrance to the alley on um, 12th Ave on the on the northeast side of the alley, um, and then and then finally so because it meets the design here for new construction uh, for the uh, for Ybor City. So second. Do we cover um, the sidewalk being in the middle of the two units? I don't no. Know if we, the we sidewalk's can... already on the west side. Yes. I'm oh, sorry, on the west side of this, okay. of, of this property. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just wondering if they make it a bigger sidewalk to serve both and, you know, you have a little bit more room, but that's okay. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a second. There's been a number of conditions placed on, upon the applicant with this uh, 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 motion. Is the applicant uh, agreeable to these conditions? Yes, I am. Okay, they acknowledge yes. All in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so let's... How do we, uh, how do we go back to our other one, Dana? I sure will. Um, so your motion will be a motion to reconsider final approval with conditions for BLC 2413 for the property located at 926 East 11th Avenue. You'll get a second on that motion. You'll vote on it then you will entertain your new motion, which is essentially the same with the additional condition. So motion to reconsider the final approval with conditions for case number BLC 24-13 at 926 East 11th Avenue. Mm -hmm. Second. 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 Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All in favor of reconsidering the motion for 24-13, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So then, um, do we just put a new motion for it? Okay. And so then the new motion for BOC 24-13, uh, so, so for move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the, for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in BOC 24-13 for the property located at 926 East 11th Avenue with the following conditions that the applicant work with staff to mirror the sidewalk to the east side of the property, that the applicant work with staff for the final uh, gutter details and for the uh, drainage of all impervious surfaces to the south side of the property to, to 11th Ave, that the applicant work with uh, staff to uh, remove the window underneath the stairs on the west side of the property, and that the applicant work with staff to finalize the character of the retaining wall to the south of the property as well as work with staff and mobility to, with the goal of having the entrance to the alley on the northeast side of the prop, on the northeast side of the alley at the 12th Avenue entrance. Uh, because based on the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Ebor City design guidelines of the City of Tampa for the following reasons. It meets the design criteria for new construction based on height and width, facade width, setback, spacing, alignment, similarity of details and forms, and building materials. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor, uh, well, all, uh, there's been a, a new condition placed on this new motion for the previous project, 24th, uh, in agreement with this uh, additional condition placed. Yes, I am. Okay, acknowledge, yes. Uh, all in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, does anyone need a break or are we ready to go into it? I'm okay. Good to blaze through. We're okay. Thanks, uh, moving on, the next uh, case on your agenda is BLC 24-23, which is uh, a property located at 1210 East 18th Avenue. The request is new construction of a single family residential um, structure and site improvements. See on the screen the uh, image of the Ybor City Historic District boundary map. Uh, the subject property is located just at the tip of the pen here, uh, just to the uh, west of Cascaden Park uh, in the aerial. You do see the subject property once again 
Um, this structure is no longer existing on the, on the site. It is a vacant site. It is situated on 18th Avenue with um, uh, 12th Street to the west and 13th Street to the east. Once again, the 1929 sandworm map showing the uh, previous structure, which was a contributing structure that was uh, demolished. These are the existing conditions of the site. See the subject properties. There is a, a small retaining wall uh, that separates it to the sidewalk. The property that abuts to the east is a, also a contributing structure. Moving to the west, you have this residence. Note the elevation from grade as I'm going through these uh, photos. Looking down the block on 18th, this is moving towards the uh, east, I believe, and then turning around the other way. If you notice the, the block, there's not an alley. It, the, the rear street uh, is 19th Avenue um, to the rear, so there's not a, an alley in the rear. This is the structure across the street. Because uh, the, the prior structure will be referenced throughout the presentation, I'm going to show what the, the physical structure looked like. This was the structure previous previously situated on the site. You also have these uh, photos in your uh, staff report. Just some of the, the details. The east elevation. The west elevation. The rear. This is just an example of how the, how the walkway tied in to the sidewalk. So just to give you some prior history on this, to give you the context of the review, uh, there was originally an application that was submitted for the contributing structure back in May of 2022 for an addition to the structure that I just showed you. Uh, subsequent to that, that was approved and um, uh, the project began. Uh, demolition occurred uh, within that process, uh, initiated by um, the, I guess, owner and contractor. Uh, the agent can give you more information if that becomes relevant. That occurred uh, after the May date. Uh, so the applicant came back in July of 2023 to request an after-the-fact demolition from the commission. Uh, at that time, the commission, which was uh, July 25th, 23, denied the issuance of the certificate of appropriateness, uh, specifically that the, um, the uh, demolition uh, resulted in a self-imposed economic hardship, uh, that the app applicant had compromised the architectural integrity of the building or structure by intentionally or willfully neglecting the property, and the BLC chose to deny the application for demolition. Thereafter, the applicant um, appealed the decision to City Council, and City Council on uh, October 19th of 2023 uh, made a motion to overturn the decision of the Barrio Latino Commission in the previous case for the after-the-fact certificate of appropriateness to demolish the contributing structure and, and approved, uh, approved that demolition. Um, within your s staff report on page three, you see the um, motion that City Council uh, entered into the record at that particular time. I won't read that verbatim because I think we'll be talking about this a little later. But um, the case is now before you for construction on that site. There was a, a lot of discussion in the City Council about exactly what that construction should look at. And I think the, the applicant, I've been working with the applicant to move the um, project along. So what I would recommend at this point is that we uh, invite the agent 
up to present the case and then continue the discussion thereafter. So we're going to treat this as a CA, right? So it's a normal. normal so it's a certificate case. of appropriateness for new construction, construction and site improvements. some new uh, members of the audience. We do a swear in to make sure all people are sworn. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, I wasn't planning on present presenting today. Uh, the architect who was going to present is out of the country since Thursday. Um, so I'll do the best I can. If you have any questions, um, I'll answer to the best of my ability. Uh, if you got any concerns, I'll answer to the best of my ability. In regards to terms that you guys use for architectural uh, design, I will answer them to the best of my ability. Um, so we'll go ahead and start off. Right here we have the site plan. In the site plan, I'll start off uh, mentioning the back end of the structure. Uh, the back end, uh, there is a old block wall that is currently leading um, and it will be removed. It got approved for a design exception to be removed uh, with transportation. During that time, they either wanted it to be approved or it to be removed and the easiest thing to do was remove it as it was falling down and falling backwards because of that big oak tree that you see in the back which is about 33 inches. Um, the exterior of the property's perimeter will have a fence panels all around it that I will show you on the material pallet. Um, the front setback from the street to the structure is approximately 20.3. The back end is about 90 by 0.11. The sides are 13.8. The left hand side is 13.10. As you can see, the driveway is um, on the front left of the property. It stayed in the same location. Um, in the drawing, we have a parking pad that goes back all the way to the site plan of the structure. As you can see, this structure is one whole stru structure. It is flush completely, uh, besides the back end extra square feet that was agreed on with city council. Um, on the back end, we have our AC unit placed. This back area is also the, the deck to access the backyard to walk down to. Um, we have trees on the side, 14 inch palm trees that will be um, either removed if needed, if they're in the way, if they obstruct the fencing. Um, the only thing of natural resources would be the oak tree, which as of now, it's not affecting anything for the new fencing. Um, that is the site plan that we have currently for it. And as you can see, we also have a walking area going to the back of the structure with the side exterior door, as well as a back door. Going on to the side elevation of the proposed building. Is it fine if it's sideways or you guys want to? Okay. I 
Okay. I will start off with uh, this side of the elevation. Um, as you can see in the elevation, starting off from the foundation, the foundation is slab on grade. Um, as you can see, if the, as the gas between that is uh, slab on grade with lattice put in front of it, the piers are brick piers that are put there to incorporate uh, the pier look structure. <clears throat> the window frames are of um, Latino Barrio approval that we went ahead and corrected, so they have similar window frames. The side exterior door has a covering, so it doesn't have any water penetration inside the structure. The railings are going to be wood railings. The side will be hardy board. Um, it will be it will be seven and a quarter by twelve cedar mill smooth hardy board. As you can see on the top part, the rafters they will be exposed rafters. The roof will be your standard 3D shingle roof. The corners will be hardy board trim. The windows will be single hung windows. As we go on to the next side of the elevation, as you can see, we have a good amount of window placement on this side. The foundation is slab on grade. The, the gaps between will have a lattice. The piers can have a brick pattern on top of it, so it shows pier structure. The railings are wood. The corners have hardy board trim. The center has hardy board trim going across to show the different floors. The siding is hardy board trim. The shingles are 3D dimensional shingles and the rafters are exposed. This is the front elevation of the structure. We have one single window on the bottom, two on the top. The front has the retaining wall with wood railings. Posts that are four by four by eight. The roof is 3D shingle. We have the same um, for the window trims as the door trim that it will resemble. <laughs> the door is changing on the front of the uh, elevation, um, staff recommended it. So there is an, a, a, a door that will be shown once we get to the material pallet that they mentioned last week. As you can see, we have the corner hardy board trim. We have the siding that is hardy, hardy board siding. The top decorative, um, staff recommended a different design for it. Um, we left it as it for now until you guys are able to review what we've provided. As you go to the back elevation, the back elevation shows an indent on the sides of the extra square footage that is being to this, the new construction home. Um, the roof will drop compared to the original square footage of the previous home before the addition. So it shows an indent of where it was at. The back area, as you can see, has a covering. Um, that door is fine and it'll be shown the material pallet. The door trim is the same as the window trim that will be shown on the material pallet. The trim is hardy board. The siding is hardy board. Now I'll go ahead and go to the material pallet section.
staff mentioned a couple things in regards to the material pallet. Uh, majority of the items are items that were approved for new construction for previous bills that were done that they were just taking from and put on these. As you can see, this is the front door and staff said that it was, um, didn't meet guidelines of the Latino barrio. So most likely we won't provide it and we remove it. I'll show you an alternative. This is the exterior back door and the exterior side door. This window frame won't be used. The railings won't be used, which I'll show on the additional material pallet. Four by four PT, four by four by eight PT is used for the front porch for the covering. The fencing is six by eight PT fencing. The covering is the same covering that was used for the rehabilitated home previously. The hardy plank is a seven and a quarter smooth hardy plank that was approved on previous builds. The color palette that we chose was light green for the body and trim white. As you can see up here where the brick pattern is at, that is what we're referring to, the brick like pier, piers that it will be added. This is the 3D dimensional shingles. Here attached is the lattice that we will be adding between each pier. This is the additional material pallet after staff suggestions. As you can see, this applies primarily for that back elevation window. They wanted for it to show some uh, gap, but the trim is what the new construction will be around all window frames and door frames. <coughs> this is also a substitute for the hardy board trim. Um, that staff um, said that we might have to use something different. This is another substitute for a trim board that was used for another construction in this historic district that we could use as well for the trim. This is a substitute for the wood railing that will be used. For the siding, the same thing applies. It's another option of siding that can be used if needed. Both of them are smooth and they are hardy board. Attached is the exterior light that will be used for all exterior front door, side door, and back door. Attached is the exterior front door hardware, back door hardware, and side door hardware. In regards to the soffits, the previous structure at the time had plywood. We attached a hardy board soffit that can be installed. Attached is the mailbox in the front elevation of the front of the home. And attached is a wood door that would replace the existing front door as an option. <coughs> For window type, window type would be a low E argon double hung white vinyl. Here is the interior layout of the first floor and the second floor. On the first floor, we have an open concept with the kitchen living room there. The dining room is off to the left. The kitchen is back more to the right. This back area is a bedroom with the closet and the AC closet. On the back left, we have access to the parking pad for the cars, as well as a hallway to get to the backyard. 
Right here is located a bathroom on the first floor for people to use. As you go to the back area of the structure, you have a deck and the AC unit that is located right next to it. To the second floor of the structure, we have the bedroom. We have a walk-in closet that we incorporated a window, so it can go ahead and be similar to the previous elevation. We have the staircase. <coughs> right here, we have a sharing, uh, shared bathroom between both bedrooms that can be used. As we go in the hallway, um, we will reach the next bedroom. As we go down more, we will reach the master bedroom. In the master bedroom to the right, we have one window on the far right-hand corner. We have two in the back. In the walk-in closet, we have one window to the far left. And from there, you can have access to the master bathroom. Attached is the wall section, showing the foundation all the way up to the roof. Attached here is the approved product list. gelled windows with the Florida product approval numbers. <laughs> and then we have the site plan. During the appeal process with City Council, one of our biggest things to agree with them and come to an agreement to build a new structure was not using original materials, was using materials that are consistent with new construction and within the guidelines of it to make it most cost effective. So one of the things I want to make you con to consider when we are discussing this, as there has been back and forth of some confusion, the letter states of the city council that during the discussion, we are refer, refer back to the discussion for guidance in regards to what material is supposed to be used. One of the non-negotiables with us agreeing with city councils was that we were going to use original materials and we were not. Um, I've also included emails with Dennis and Ron in regards to that with times and minutes of the YouTube video, what happened with city council and what we're for, we, we are supposed to refer back to in the discussion. Um, if you have any questions, I'll answer to the best of my ability. I know this is a different type of application since it's more open to what is needed and what is wanted. So we're open to discussion on what is needed. Um, this isn't a, you know, a plan that we can go ahead and just provide you what you want because at the end of the day, it's, it's two parties involved. Um, so that's why we're keeping it with multiple options open. So you guys can have suggestions and we can respond back and what works and everything else like that. So that's my presentation. Um, the architect is real architect. He's a very known architect in Tampa Bay. He's one of the best. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it to this meeting today as he's out of town, which I found out on Thursday. Um, he was going to be here for the January 26th one, but it got pushed. Um, so I was not aware that he was not going to be here. So just trying to provide the, the best uh, possible answers for you guys and suggestions and what is needed so we can, you know, discuss and get something moving forward. Uh, Dennis Fernandez, Architects Review and Historic Preservation Manager. Uh, just wanted to begin uh, now by reading the motion from City Council into the record. Um, uh, the Council, uh, this, this is the motion that, that occurred uh, October 19th of 2023, um, made by Councilman Clendenin and seconded by Councilman Carlson. The Council moves to overturn the Barrio Latino Commission's denial of an application for an after-the-fact demolition 
of the structure located at 1210 East 18th Avenue, requested in application number BLC-23-122. As a condition of the council's decision to overturn the Barrio Latino Commission's decision, the property owner must apply for an after-the-fact demo, uh, redevelop the property in a manner that aligns with the original structure that was previously on site and the design guidelines for the district with the discussion that was had with the representative of the Barrio Latino Commission of the addition of the two-story addition and must work with the Barrio Latino Commission to ensure that this structure is built in accordance with their guidelines and regulations. Uh, it then goes on to kind of refer to um, some of the code enforcement activity, which says, if the owner fails to redevelop the property in this manner, all fines accrued on the property from the date that they were started until such time is determined that the construction is either not in compliance or not permitted, shall continue to be accrued and paid for by the owner. In addition, that the architectural integrity of the structure was clear, clearly failing, but not intentional or willful neglect by the property owner, uh, by the uh, of the property by the by the owner, and that motion was carried out with a vote of four to two. So that being said, I think uh, you know I've tried to. Um, uh, recommend uh, a path that I felt was in line with this particular motion. Um, I, I believe that uh, the owner has uh, made good headway with the form of the structure. Originally, there were some um, differences in what you've seen today, and we've worked to uh, capture the original volume of the his previously present historic structure, and then uh, add an addition on that would be done uh, in a manner as if the original structure was still there. Um, with that, uh, we did find that the applicant, the application currently is uh, consistent with the guidelines with this caveat of the material palette, because we believe that the material palette is uh, probably one of the key issues that you all will be talking about. Um, staff recommends that the use of the original materials on the reconstructed portion of the house or the alternative materials do not adequately reflect the character of the original house. Uh, that being said, we, we do recognize in council's motion that there was latitude given to the portion of the house that now represents the addition. Um, we feel that there was some uh, flexibility that was um, incorporated into the motion based on that. Going through the uh, uh, presentation, I uh, did want to ask for some clarification on a, a few issues. First of all, just for the, um, the owner to, an agent to confirm the location of the original structure on site and any uh, modifications that exist to the, the uh, proposed structure. So those, those setbacks um, should be uh, the same. Also to provide any scoring patterns on both the ribbon dri driveway, parking pads or walkways. Um, to demonstrate that the elevation from grade is consistent with the original structure. Uh, he did talk about the fencing, just to point out the fencing uh, on the site, any proposed fencing. And then also uh, one thing, I think the, the retaining wall would just like some clarification about how that's gonna be uh, handled. Um, you have in your packet uh, examples of the original elevations and uh, the proposed drawings. So we do, um, feel strongly that on the original structure, there should be a recreation of the original fenestration. Uh, I think there was some flexibility there, which we have for most structures for unique uses, such as kitchens or um, stairs that might necessitate uh, a, a, a slight modification of that. Um, if he could uh, clarify the dimension of the depth of the overhang, I know that that was on the wall section, but it was, was kind of tough to read that. Uh, and just how that whole soffit area is going to be um, treated. Uh, there's a, a horizontal band board that was introduced both at the gable on the front and then mid floor on the side elevations of, of the portion of the structure that's referencing the original structure. That was not an element that was there. We're, we're recommending that that be removed on the original portion uh, that's being referenced. Uh, just to clarify the foundation type and detailing, there was a reference to slab on grade. I think what we're seeing is a retaining, a, um, 
a, a floor system that is more of a stem wall. Um, so I believe that's what the what the intent is. Uh, just some more detailing on the front columns. You did show a four by four. Does it have a cap? Does it have a base? I think you know just to, to, so we have a clear understanding of what's going on um, there as well. And then just uh, if you go down to the material palette, I listed what the original materials were and what was being proposed. I think that's going to be a discussion point. He did uh, make some uh, changes based on the staff report. We felt that the door that was originally presented was more aligned with the craftsman style than with more of a frame vernacular. I think the, the substitute door um, is, is appropriate. I think there's some room for alternative materials when you get to the rear or the back. Um, where, where he was proposing the, uh, the other type of door type. Uh, the roofing, I think, is a major issue. I think the original character of the, of the structure was a metal roof. Now we're seeing a shingle roof, so I think there should be some uh, discussion on that. The siding on the original was a wood lap siding. Where we have a couple different um, proposed sidings. I think there needs to be you know, discussion on that. And then, of course, the faux wood grain is not permitted. The windows, uh, you know, these were boarded up, but the period windows would have been wood. I think we're showing a, a, an all vinyl window, which we don't approve on any sort of basis for all vinyl. Normally there's a clad window, which would be the new construction window. So that would be a discussion point that would need to be hap happen. Um, the trim, once again, there's a synthetic trim that's being proposed versus the wood trim that would have been original. I did hear him mention that the wood railing would be used, so I think that would be uh, consistent with the original structure and with the period. Um, and then we talked about the foundation uh, already. Uh, he did provide additional information on the lighting, hardware, and color selection. So um, I believe those are all consistent. And uh, just in the wall section, just to ensure that the windows are recessed to the appropriate degree. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions as the discussion progresses. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Uh, anyone here from the public wishing to comment? Mr. Rodriguez, you can take a seat for a minute and speak, and we'll have you back up. Hi, good morning. My name is Kim Headland. Um, I reside at 1023 East 17th Avenue. This is located in VME Bourne. I'm actually here today on behalf of the VME Bourne Neighborhood Association. Um, this proposal, as discussed, replaces a contributing structure that was demolished without the permit or certificate of appropriateness. Um, the two-story property stood as an exemplary representation of residential architecture within the Via Mibor neighborhood from the early 20th century. Um, it's incredibly disheartening that such an integral piece of our neighborhood's historic fabric was lost, and we have some serious concerns um, about the precedent that gets set. And that's a precedent when a historic contributing structure is um, lost, demolished over a weekend, um, and there's minimal uh, impacts or repercussions to that. Um, so today we're asking respectfully that the Barrio Latino Commission uphold the council decision and require that the owner redevelop the property with a new residential structure that does truly align seamlessly with the original contributing structure in terms of scale, mass, um, form, and material. And while in terms of form and scale and mass, I think it's, um, it's definitely moving in the right direction. There are some concerns about specifically about materials and some of the nuances there. Um, we feel it's critical that new wood window sizes and alignments um, be preserved within the original, within the found, within the perimeter of the where the original home was. Um, we also believe that the use of historic materials inclusive of wood siding and a metal roof and appropriate um, a foundation structure is is critical again that main house had a floor height and a setback that was um, defining of the character of 
residential architecture in the early 20th century. And I think if we can as closely align to that as possible, um, it, it would be a really good thing. Um, so again, preserving our local heritage is a shared responsibility. Um, our neighborhood association um, believes firmly that the reconstruction of the structure in harmony with its predecessor is the best path forward. So thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Okay, anyone else here from the public wish to comment? Seeing none, we're going to go ahead and uh, ask questions of the applicant. Um, who wants to start? I, I am curious, is the um, application being presented to us as a preliminary approval or a final? It's a preliminary uh, because there's been a lot of discussion back and forth between the staff and ourselves, and it's been kind of stalled, um, but we've making progress. I would say it's not 100 percent. I would say it's 80 percent, but the biggest thing is the material palette. Um, you know, we submit the application, you know, they review a couple things, and then two weeks later, it's another review. So it's been a long process prolonging uh, for it, but this is, I would say this is a preliminary. This is not fully complete uh, to what it actually is. I know the trim that's going in the middle of the, of the side elevation in the front. We added that because we didn't know what was gonna be requested. We saw that other new constructions had that, so we just applied that. But stuff like that, we're fine we're removing it. It's not a big deal for us. Um, we just wanted to add that so then the architecture has, you know, it meets new current, new current, new construction in that area. Um, so I would say this is like 90% uh, complete because of staff's comments of last week. So changes in regards to the material changed um, as well as the architect isn't here as well uh, to present it to the best of his ability uh, rather than mine. Um, so I would say this is more of a, a guidance on what is being required, what are you guys requiring, what is going to be approved, rather than this, this back and forth that's, it's not going to go 100% where it needs to go. It, you know, so we just want more clarity on what is going to be requested within the guidelines of what we agreed on with City Council so that we can get this, you know, situated and, and going. Um, but the elevation, everything is, is pretty much similar. Um, to what we presented. It's mostly just missing the wall section, miss, changing out material pallets of stuff that is being requested and what's not being requested, uh, you know, stuff like that. Well, the list of conditions that has been presented by staff seems fairly clear. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in there that you would find unclear? Yeah, so there was a lot of things that we were, we were fine with. Uh, they said correct the site plan, demonstrate elevation from grade. We were, we were fine with that. Demonstrate the location of the original structure. Provide a scoring pattern on ribbon driveway and the parking pad. Provide concrete walkway connecting the sidewalk and porch, uh, porch stairs. Well, um, he, he went through all of these conditions, yeah, yeah. so we understand that they are in the record at yeah. the moment. But it would seem to me that the drawings that were presented today do not reflect your agreement with these conditions. And I would suggest that, that the drawings would need to be updated and brought back to this board um, because approving a set of preliminary drawings as final leaves too many doors open for um, inconsistencies and misunderstandings. Yeah, I would, I would say the drawings are final to besides the trim um, that is going in the middle and on the side, um, as well as staff's comments in regards to the vent in the front of the structure. Um, the part that I'm referring to primarily is the material palette. Uh, that's why I provide an additional sheet of other items that were mentioned last week. Um, as a substitute if needed for it. So I guess which, item, which items are you referring to that are, I guess, inconsistent um, that, that you see that we can discuss? Well, so we can just go ahead and kind of take a look at some of the elevations. So yeah. 
like a lot of the window placements are inconsistent with what the original uh, building had. So I'm assuming a lot of these new windows are probably internally driven from an internal program, from bedrooms, you know, the layout inside, and whatever else. Uh, but I think there could be a lot more work done to kind of make whatever you need internally kind of still match what the original window locations were and the, uh, and the number of origi original windows. I can understand maybe one or two more windows for, for certain things. But um, there's a lot of inconsistencies between what's being proposed and what was originally there. Uh, so, so that's one thing right off the top of the bat. Uh, I think one of the big discussion points as kind of previously alluded to will probably be um, going over materials, maybe even on a, just like a specific, you know, what, over every single one. And just like, you know, maybe kind of figuring out what materials um, we can kind of use uh, from everything from the siding, uh, windows to the roofing as well, um, and what uh, we can work out for, for some of these as well, because uh, a lot of proposed materials uh, probably won't be acceptable from, from what we're kind of looking at as from here. Um, and certain the other things, like so like the front porch, um, the original front porch looked like it spanned the entire width of the front facade. Um, here we kind of looks like it's inset a little bit. So there's certain small things I can, and then part of the discussion maybe might be too, might be the, I can understand, because I believe the original intent was to kind of demolish the addition that was in the rear, was that correct? And then kind of build that two-story addition. Mm -hmm. And so now you're kind of presenting that two. Story. It's, it's, it was a single story addition, but, yeah. but they're demolishing it and building and propose a two-story addition in the rear, right, where the new master bedroom and such will go. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain things that we would, even if it's a two-story addition, I'd like to see like, uh, you know, your master bedroom windows are kind of put together. They're, they're double. We kind of like to see them maybe kind of spaced out again where, where the original intent was. It kind of reflects some of those original conditions too. Um, I think there's just some detailing that we have to kind of maybe work out with, um, you know, especially your window trims and, and that kind of thing as well, just to just kind of, kind of, kind of give like a high level overview for you for some of the things we're kind of looking out for. Yeah, if, if you want to start off with the windows, uh, I actually printed out a um, of the original of the proposed uh, rehabilitation. Uh, we actually had a lot more windows on the structure as the staff uh, advised us to remove them. So, you know, now you're requesting for windows to be added, but those were there in the gaps that, you know, that are missing. It's just they requested for them to be removed. So I'll show you the, the, uh, the south and the, and the front and the east elevation uh, to be start off. So here you have the front elevation. Here's the original. Here's the proposed. Now you have the east elevation. Which is right here. For this window primarily, this is a bathroom window. Um, this is a bedroom, this is a bedroom. So that's why the size is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. For the back part, uh, they didn't have anything particular because it was an add-on that was being added um, and there was only like one window. So I think originally we had a window here and I think they requested it for it to be removed um, as well as here as well too, but it didn't reflect similar to the previous elevation. So we can go into the next side of the structure in the back. So on the back, obviously, it, is, it will be different because there wasn't a, an, a single floor addition. So it wouldn't be the same, which staff advised that it wouldn't be a problem. As you can see, the back area. And then we can go back to the other side of the structure. On the other side of the structure, as you can see, um, there's only four windows. On the newer one, we have about, I would say six, primarily because now this addition is getting stacked, so more things get pushed back um, on where window placement is at exactly. But starting off with the west elevation, this is the rehabilitated one, and this is the proposed. So the window placement, um, at least from my view, is it's very similar besides the west elevation, um, and it's because primarily that's where most of the rooms are now being added to the top, so everything kind of shifts. 
So the staircase is still in the same location. Um, the windows are based on bedrooms and bathrooms. And the new proposed, as you can see, we have another window in the far left-hand corner um, that is part of the master bedroom now. So that's in regards to the windows and what we have um, for the new construction and the previous rehabil rehabilitated home. Um, I guess, which one would you like me to show? Would you like me to show the, the original rehabilitated home or you want me to show the new construction for, I guess, any questions that you guys might have on which window specifically are you referring to about? I think the side I, I would take most issue with is probably the west elevation. So um, as you said, you kind of pushed a lot of those windows, those windows back uh, from what was previously proposed. Yeah. Okay. So shifting this one, so it lines up with these bottom two. Let's see. So can we? Can you show what was originally proposed when you were doing yes. the rehabilitation? Yeah. As well. Okay. So this is the original yeah. of the rehabilitated home. Shifting goes back, and then uh, so why was that extra window added as well to sort of the front? The it's on the landing of the stairs. Is that the landing of stairs? Okay. Yeah. the The far right is the is the staircase. That's all right. That's fine. So that would be okay. The staircase at the time uh, was a little bit different in the inside of the rehabilitated structure, so I guess that was for the reason why there wasn't a staircase. I mean, there wasn't a window on that staircase. That'll be fine. Yes, yeah, so I think moving that window over to the left. Okay. Uh, as well in the lining with the bottom window. Okay. That's a big one. And now that we kind of see where um, what the or what the re rehabilitation drawings and reminding us of that was, because we don't have that in our packet, so that was quite yeah. helpful to kind of look over and, and see what was previously approved. Um, and so then, can you go over? I think the, one of the he just wants to maybe discuss is sort of the roofing material. So obviously mm -hmm. the original roofing material was metal. Mm -hmm. uh, metal roofs are fairly easy to come by these days as well. Uh, so it was, what was the, re the reason to kind of change it to an asphalt shingle? The biggest thing is obviously when we had our discussion with city council was cost. Um, and that was the reason why we weren't willing to agree with original materials. Uh, what we agreed with them was primarily use new construction building materials that are required within the guidelines and make the structure similar to what it previously was. So that's the biggest thing from going from shingle, going to shingle from metal is that metal is most is not used in new construction anymore. Most houses that you see being presented are 3D shingle, um, and the cost of it is definitely a big difference for metal and a 3D shingle. Because um, obviously, city council understood that this build is you know for the community primarily. Like there's nothing to gain from it at all. Um, so one of our things is if we're if we're going to put something back on the lot was to go ahead and make it most similar to what was there and obviously cost effective keeping our cops as minimal as possible. Um, so that's why we went ahead and, and provided a 3D shingle for it. Um, the 3D shingle was uh, from previous bills that were approved in the Latino Barrio that I went ahead and provided the shingles for it to make it you know, similar that what you guys appro approved in the past uh, for other new construction. So that, that was the reason for the difference for the, the metal and the, the shingle. <coughs> So I, I, and then so I assume that was, as you kind of mentioned, it would be pretty much for all the materials across the board, right? It's just cost is your, your main concern. So, I mean, I don't really have much more questions in terms of that. I think we will have the, a discussion internally about what materials we, we would still find acceptable uh, and such. But uh, I guess in, term, in terms of that, I don't really much have any more questions for the applicant. No, I, I don't know that I have. I think my question is, no, not for the applicant. Uh, well, I have, a, I have a few questions. So uh, I, I share the commissioner's uh, concerns over some of the elevations. I think, I think there could be some flexibility there with the window placement to make them, you know, function for your use. But I think other things need to, need to happen first before we get to that, to that, to that point. Uh, one thing that kind of, you know, the front elevation kind of just un is unsettling to me because the windows on the top don't match the historic. I mean, the if we're talking priorities here, the front elevation's got to be the biggest priority of replicating the contributing structure that was demolished, right? I mean, I think that's the intent, is to replicate the historic footprint, right? You're building back the footprint of the original structure, and then you're 
modified the back to make it a two-story addition, which is 10 times better than the original plan. Uh, and I think there's more flexibility. So you have this primary structure, the contributing structure footprint, which needs to be replicated as best as you can. And then you have a little bit more flexibility for the addition on the back, because that's not part of the contributing structure. So there's uh, more flexibility there. But I think right off the bat, I look at the front elevation, and the windows aren't aligned. They're kind of mismatched and not, it's so easy to just put them kind of back where they were originally or have them be proportioned within the, you know, the front. So I look at, well, you can look at what's on the screen. They're just shifted. They're not, you know, and they're even worse on, on this one that they're off. So I think that's a simple thing. And then you bring down that alignment with those windows that are on the upper level to the, the, the lower level. Um, so a couple things I heard I want to ask you about. So on, you're using brick piers down for the foundation. I've heard lattice work in between uh, the piers. What kind of lattice work is that? It didn't really show up on our image on the material palette. Yeah, we're using a slab on grade, and then in between we have the brick pattern piers yep. that will be put applied on the front of it, so it has the illusion that it is piers. Yep. Um, it is an approved product that was. What's think, the lattice? Only, what's the lattice work in between the? The piers? lattice was for because the real the previous rehabilitated structure had lattice that we proposed, so I, we just put it on there. Um, to see what you guys recommended. We can remove it if you guys don't want it. We're flexible on the lattice. Um, so that was an option that we put it So because the previous rehabilitation had it. So okay. Well, I don't, I don't think, uh, what's the material of that lattice? The lattice was uh, wood. Okay, so at least we're, we're dealing with wood here. I think there's a better solution for that. And, you know, I think uh, some of the previous projects that you've seen before have even the stucco is a little bit more palatable than what, what there was uh, at that point in time. But I do like the use of the brick piers there that you're doing. Uh, and, you know, whether that, you know, you just run a continuous CME wall and stucco over it is also acceptable. Um, but, you know, maybe the, this commission feels like the wood lattice would be uh, a more appropriate situation there. But at least it's wood, so that's good. Um, let's see, the hardy board trim. Um, what was the previous size of the wood cladding that was on there? Uh, I've, he I've heard that you're proposing to use seven and a half inch or eight inch hardy board siding. Uh, that's, it looks like from the pictures, the, the previous siding might have been that size, maybe a little smaller, do you know? I don't know the exact size of it. Um, I don't have the, the previous rehabilitated structure with me, the plans of everything, so I don't know the exact size on there, um, I can tell you that, you know, old wood siding compared to hardy board might be the same or might be, you know, a quarter inch off. Um, but I can't tell you exactly. I don't have the, the okay. material of the previous real blood structure with me. Okay. Um, one of the things was the uh, exposed rafter tails. So yep. it seems like the previous, uh, you're proposing exposed rafter tails where the previous house, uh, the, the soffits were enclosed doesn't look like there's a very big overhang there, but it was enclosed. Uh, but you're still proposing to do exposed rafter tails? Yeah, we were just proposing because new construction in the area had it. That's one thing we're open to go ahead and close it if you guys would like. Um, it's just, we were, we were going into this open. Like, what do you guys want? What are you guys requesting? So if you want to close, we can go ahead and close it. Well, I think, I think the big picture here and what we're all struggling with and what we're trying to, staff is trying to communicate this to, this is, was a contributing structure, which as Ms. Hedlund talked about, is was an, exempl an exemplary example, and it might not have been in best shape, but it was a good example of representative architecture of single family residential two story within the district. Uh, it's, a, it's a loss for the area. Uh, it's a contributing structure that's lost. We can never get it back. So I think the intent here is to replicate that as much as possible using some modern materials, but still detailing it like a historic structure that it was and that it was contributing. So I think that's really the intent here. Okay. And I think our job is to, to kind of help you get there because you're, I think you're making some good moves and I, and I see the improvements in, in what I've reviewed for this meeting and things, but there's, I think there's a couple things that we need to keep moving forward. Uh, to kind of uh, resolve and make this resemble, and it can be done, resemble as much what was there in that contributing structure as possible using modern materials. So it's a balancing act. Um, so I think 
with the exposed rafter tails, it, maybe that's okay for the addition because that's not the contributing part of it, but the contributing structure should match what was there. So okay. I, I think we'd prefer to see that enclosed uh, like the original structure. And at that point in time, you might as well do the addition the same way yeah. and not change your, your systems. Okay. Um, Is the proposed uh, material palette for uh, the soffit that I, I shown was acceptable? I, I, you know, you know, I think that we're going to have a discussion about the whole okay. material palette in general. Right now, we're just kind of asking questions to make sure that we understand what you're proposing. Um, architectural shingles, that's proposed. I think that's that's a big one with us. I mean, I think you're, you're going to have to do metal roofing up there with the 5B crimp that was on what was on that building originally. Uh, I, I won't speak for my commissioners, but I can tell you that's uh, a, a big one uh, right out, out of the bat. Uh, but you're you're proposing asphalt shingles, not 5B crimp, correct? Correct. Okay. okay. I think you've done a nice job with the historic footprint and the addition. Um, the fencing seems acceptable. It's a it's a wood fence with PT. Uh, the front door might need a little work. Uh, the windows. What's the material of the windows? Just to be clear. The windows is one thing we're trying to get clarification on uh, from you guys. Mm -hmm. um, on what is what are the windows that are provided for new construction that we're allowed to use? Because uh, a lot of different, you know, people are saying we can use this, we can't use that, and then you know, different things are approved, different things are not approved. So we were just trying to get clarification on what are our options that we can use for the windows. Sure. What are you proposing? Um, originally, we were proposing the vinyl uh, double hung windows. Um, so just wondering, is that an option for us? No. Okay. Uh, Wood clad vinyl windows would work, or wood windows straight up. Uh, so you know, vinyl is kind of a not a great material in the historic district. I mean, for you know, you don't see vinyl siding on houses. I mean, you may have a couple examples that have been kind of grandfathered in, but not for new construction. So vinyl okay. is you know, no vinyl fences, no vinyl windows, no you know. In I think the technology has got the vinyl windows, but it has to be wood clad. So okay. Um, would wood clad something like this be acceptable? It's a wood clad window, 37 by 56. What a clad, clad wood. Yeah, I believe so. What's it? Anderson? Yeah, Anderson. And, and you can work with staff. I mean, they have a full okay. list of manufacturers that, you know, we see in the district. But straight up aluminum windows, just you can't, you can't do it. I okay. Mean, you can do, yeah. um, so if we go through the designs, mm -hmm. the footprint, uh, we'll probably comment on the, the window placement. Um, I think that's all that I have for questions right now. Let me double check. Yeah, I'm good for questions right now. Okay. Any other questions? Question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've um, we've asked a number of questions, had some dialogue with you about the proposed project. Uh, you have a few minutes for rebuttal or summary of your comments, and then we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing, discuss the case, and and make some uh, direct give some direction here. Um. So I wasn't expecting to present. So. You know, as you can see, it wasn't the best presentation, unfortunately. Um, but in regards to one thing we're trying to get out of it is clarification based on, you know, we provided two options of hardy board that were approved for previous constructions. And we're just wondering which one we can use. So they both are smooth. Uh, so they both should be compatible and within the guidelines of, of you guys. So we're just trying to get clarification on what, what do you guys want for the material? And then we can go ahead and go from there. Because, you know, we don't do this every day. We don't, we don't know the guidelines. We don't know what's what, what's needed for the materials and stuff like that. We're just going based on other products that are being approved and we're trying to provide them and then we're getting back and forth. So that's primarily the thing. Um, in regards to the front elevation, if you can refer uh, what exactly, how much of the front windows you would like to be moved to the left or the right, so those changes can be made. I know for the side elevations, uh, those were noted, as well as the foundation uh, items that you mentioned, those were noted. But if you can just provide a clarification about the front elevation of the windows um, on where you would like them so we can try to make those adjustments to make it work with the interior layout. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else. And you know, ask me any questions if you guys have. OK, uh, thank you for that. And we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing at this point and have discussion of the case amongst ourselves. We'll start. Well, okay. yeah, so, 
You know, I think in terms of like um, the general massing, um, sizing, and all that kind of stuff, matching to historic, that's, that, that's on the right track. Um, there's a lot of uh, details that need to be worked through, obviously. Um, I think if the applicant just goes back and uh, makes, all, makes all the windows match what was previously approved, I think we, we would be good in the windows, just like on the front elevation, if you kind of look at what was previously approved, you know, the windows were more centered on, on the front facade. Here, there's just that little bit of offset there that kind of makes things look a little uneasy, it doesn't make it look Quite, quite balanced, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it kind of loses sort of that, uh, that that balance that was on that historic facade there, just straight off, the, straight off the front. So if you go back, have your architect just match everything that was previously approved. I think we should be good on the windows there. Um, and so now previously we, approved or the existing building. Or the existing yeah. building too, yeah. right? Um, depending yeah. on um, how that works with your um, new <laughs> internal floor plans that that you all, that you all have laid out. Um, materials are obviously the biggest thing here. Obviously, I can understand the aspect of you know, costs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I, you know, in order for us to kind of replicate the historic building, I think materials becomes a very important aspect of it. Um, I think for some of the, big, the bigger items, roofing, obviously, I, I totally agree. I think it has to be the, a 5B crimp metal roof. I, I don't think we can go with asphalt shingles here. Um, the windows have to be at least a wood clad window of some sort. Um, and then the siding, <coughs> I don't know. As a, as a as a architect that's done single family residential, I don't I've never specced wood siding in my yeah. entire career, so I'm not sure how easy that is even to procure at this point in days. So that's something I kind of wanted to kind of like ask you all. Um, Room lumber. Yeah. Room lumber. Yeah. We put a, an addition onto our house with siding, and yeah. it's yeah. available. It's available. Okay, so. Find it. And I think my thought too is staff has a list of. Vendors. vendors who provide these things right. so I mean I, I keep going back to City Council's motion and what they approved and they're pretty specific in what they're saying as far as aligning it with the original structure that was previously on site and design guides design guidelines for the district um, so I think you know I think they're pretty clear in what they're saying to do and, and staff was very diligent in breaking out the conditions for us to say, here's what it was, or here's what the period is, and here's what they're proposing. They either fall in or fall out of what the period handles, mm -hmm. right? So why am I sitting here deciding that? They either fall in or they fall out. So m my thought is, they need to figure out what they want to present falling into and then present it to us and say this is the direction that we we want to go with this and we'll let them know if we don't feel something works for some reason i i don't know if i'm looking at it wrong i mean i kept looking no. at this going okay why am i designing this house no it, and i think the impetus needs to go back to them i mean uh, i'm looking at this opportunity to provide them some feedback of what we'd be looking for here uh, you know, I think we all understand this is a contributing structure that yeah. had a cer certain footprint. They're replicating that. Uh, you know, personally, and I won't speak for all of you, but you know, uh, there's certain go no goes. And it's got to be five B print metal roofing. It's got to be the wood wood windows or wood clad vinyl windows. It's got to match the existing fabric uh, or window placement of the existing structure. Siding. I'm a little bit more flexible on that. You know, does it need to be wood? Party board's a, a nice product, certainly appropriate. I, I would ask that that- Only that if it's the smooth product. Smooth, so, of right. course, yeah. Right. Yeah. And not, not the faux wood, but it needs to be smooth and detailed appropriately, which I think they're starting to do. They're, they're, they're showing signs of that. Uh, but I think the, the size of that party board plank should match the existing scale as much as possible. But all the details on the elevations, you know, I, I think there's some flexibility there if it's done right with the window placement. But, right. but the first goal is to try to match what was there, make it work with your interior, you know, floor layout. And then if you need to shift or you want to add one, I, I'm okay with that. As long as the material palette's right, as long as the metal roofing is there, you know, I'm okay with the hardy board. The window placement needs to be the right materials, the wood. If they want to do the lattice underneath the foundation, as long as it's wood, that's fine. I don't want to see vinyl there. You know, maybe if that's infilled with stucco, that's fine too. I think wood lattice is probably more appropriate. Um, get the door in line with what it needs to be. It doesn't need to be any, you know, the, the proposed door is a craftsman, so that's a little bit more detailed than what we'd be looking for. 
The railing. Um, the railings need to be detailed, so I think there's, there's just more work that needs to be done there. But mm -hmm. I think we offer the applicant some direction of what what has to be done and what what to do. We're providing them, and we don't we don't design it for them. We give you guys feedback on how the, they can go back to Rios, you know, your architect, and have him incorporate these items and come back for uh, another thing. So I don't think it's possible to, to get a final approval today. Um, I'm not sure how we want to leave this for a motion, but I think we've provided a good uh, amount of feedback on what to do. And, and really the big picture of staff is the resource. Right. They're at your disposal to help you, guide you through this process. So um, use them as a, a resource. They, this is their, their work, their life that they do, and, and they know what they're doing. And I think, you know, from the neighborhood standpoint and from the Barrio Latino Commission, I almost said the Latino Barrio Commission because we said it so many times, but the BLC, it's, it's certain things that we want and expect, and that's, I think, in alignment with what you've come before this board in the past and also experienced at City Council as well. So I think that motion was pretty well detailed of what we, what we expect and put the impetus back on us. But the big picture is, yes, this is new construction, but it's new construction of a contributing structure that was lost. So the first part is the reconstructed structure needs to match what was there as much as possible. The layout was. The layout and mm -hmm. the materials and, and, and you know, we can work with you, I think, on the siding and the window placement, but you need to have a better effort first before we start making adjustments from there. Any other discussion or Mr. Fernandez? Uh, I would I would recommend it, it, just a, a straight continuance to allow the applicant to, to work mm -hmm. if he's in agreement with that. I don't think that there is enough substance to actually formulate a preliminary approval at this point. But um, dates that would be possible, uh, we have one slot open in March, March 26, 2024. April is full. So we would have to go to May if March didn't work. So that's really what you're... March, March. March? Yes. So then it would be to March 26, 2024 at 9 a.m. And does the applicant... Oh, I'm sorry. Go he ahead. He asked him if that was okay. I'm, I, I, is that enough time? That, like, yeah, yeah we're asking for a lot. There's a lot that we're asking there. I mean, you guys are making progress and moving in the right yeah. direction, so... It's just we just need a you know set of... Because at the end of the day, the city council gave it back to you guys. So, hey, you guys are... The guidelines. So, this was primarily a preliminary hearing to, you know, do what's needed to be done. And, you know, and Dennis is a great Dennis and Ron are great resources for you to use and tap into. And you know, they they do this every day. And, right. and I think we've given you some direction on what we're we're looking for. And I think that would also keep the neighbors happy. And we can all move forward and, and let you get going on this. So just to just to underscore the March public hearing date, but the, the March exhibits due date is March 6th, so that's just okay. about a week away, so that's, that's a yes. quick turnaround. If you, find that, if you find that that doesn't work, we can, of course, do a continuance, but just for the record. I guess when can staff uh, provide the, the report of what's being requested so we, those changes can be made? Well, w w we can talk about that after the fact, okay. but, but I think, you know, we have to get to the motion and then we can kind of go from yeah. there. Okay. It's kind of outlined in, in here, so. And then, yeah, it's very clear. We've talked about other things, so I'd uh, encourage you to go back, watch the video again, of things that we've uh, discussed, and uh, but there'll be minutes as well, so. And okay. if, if you find that that March 6th delivery date doesn't mm -hmm. work for you, yeah. you can request yeah. a, a further continuance. Yeah. Okay, I just had one question in regards to uh, the foundation. You said we could use wood lattice or a smooth stucco on the on the bottom. Okay. All right. So let's see. Motion to uh, continuance, move and grant a continuance in case BLC 24-23 for the property located at 1210 East 18th Avenue to the March 26, 2024 public hearing at 9 a.m. Second. Uh, do we need a verbal on him, or he's okay? Okay. Uh, all in favor said motion for the continuance to March 26th. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And I think we have a mo we need a motion to receive and file submitted documents exhibits. We have our staff approval list in our packet and the testimony given today. Uh, motion to approve the exhibits presented at this public hearing. 
So should we do them separately? Or separately? Second. No. All, all, all together. And then as well as the DLC approvals from the January 2024 staff approvals? Second. All in favor, said motion. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Just motion carries. Seeing no more business in front of us, we are adjourned for this month. Thank you all. So it's not, it's not like a...